Yes, good afternoon from the west of France. It's the west of France against the west of England here, and we're enjoying the fact that the rain, which has been fairly incessant for the last couple of days since we arrived, heavy showers is abated. There's patches of blue sky. There's a strong breeze blowing down the ground from left to right as we sit on the 25 metre line at the main road entrance to this ground. It's well appointed ground, four large stands, not joined up in a circular way, but has air between them. A good looking pitch has taken the weather very well and a great occasion as ever here. In fact, Gloucester over the years have got the better of their hosts. They've won seven of the ten fixtures between the two sides and we all look back with some fondness to Gloucester's success a few years ago, 2017, where they overturned La Rochelle, been beaten all season and they won here 14-16. It was a solo effort from Billy Burns, a try, a conversion and three penalties. Of course, Burns since gone to play his rugby in Ulster. But what a challenge for Gloucester against this side. Current champion, second in the top 14 league and littered with internationals. It's a quantity home side and we'll give those starting alignments right now. Uh, La Rochelle making four changes and what changes they are. They bring in quality players, international players, but uh, they're laced throughout this side. Bruce Dillon is at full back for the home side. Teddy Thomas on the one wing, Jules Favre on the other. He's one of the few players not fully capped by France Favre. The centre pairing, Raymond Rule, the South African, with Jonathan Dante. What a figure he is. 17 stone, five pounds of him. And so impressive when he got back into action with France. The half-back selection, Teroa Kovalo, the New Zealander, with 29 all-black caps to his name and outside of him at 10 Antoine Hastoy. Up front it's Joel Slavi, the Argentinian loose head, Pierre Bujali, the hooker, and Willy Antonio, that bulky 23 stone, six foot five tight head prop. The, the home side second row pairing, Thomas Lovo and giant Will Skelton, of course, was it Saracens before he came down here to the west coast of France. And the home back row, Utan Delen, capped by Ireland, of course, 19 times. Levani Bottier and the magnificent Gregory Aldrid at eight, he's their captain. And we may see Bottier in action in the back line at some stage. They've only got a, they've got a 6-2 split like Gloucester in terms of their replacements, Larry Shell. And I've certainly seen Bottier playing at centre for them in the past. The home bench, Quinter Blett, Redal Wadi, and George Colomb cover the front. Now he's another 21 stone merchant. Uh, Roman Sazi, Johan Tanga, and Paul Boudonna are cover also covering the back five in the pack. And their two back replacements, Thomas Bergeon and Hugo Roos. That's the home selection. It's a powerful looking one, Richard Martin, isn't it? Oh, it's great to be here, Andrew. What a privilege, you know, sitting here full of anticipation and trepidation. Gloucester playing the champions of Europe in their back garden with a fantastic atmosphere, sunny pitch, windy day, anything could happen. Absolutely, waiting for the two sides to come out now. They've lost the lineup. then, they do make a couple of changes to themselves. It's Santi Crowe switching to full back. The position, the talent is Argentinian. That's where George Skimming wants to see him play at 15, really. He's had to cover for Adam Hastings, of course, much of this season. The Gloucester wingers, there's plenty of gas in. Lewis Free, Samet and Oli Thorley. The centre pairing, young Seb Atkinson, three stone lighter than Jonathan Dante at 12. Chris Harris, a reliable defending presence, of course, at 13. Gloucester's half-back pair, young Stephen Varney, 16 Italian caps, just 21 years old, and veteran Billy Twelve Trees, who was quite magnificent in Gloucester's last game here in France, just down the road at Bordeaux. He controlled the game wonderfully well, used all his nerves and experience at 10. He's back there alongside Varney. Up front is a form starting debut for Argentinian Michael Vivas at Lee's head. Sir Blake Gloucester's hooker, the youngster, and Kieran Gotosev lost his Russian tight head prop. Gloucester, of course, will let their three first choice hookers all out with injury. Behind them, it's Freddie Clark and Matthias Alamano and Gloucester's back row trio, Ruin Ackerman, Skipper Lewis Ludlow and young Jack Clements. Plenty of mobility there. The Gloucester bench, Henry Walker, Harry Ellington, Javel Ford Robinson, Cam Jordan and young Freddie Thomas coming to forwards, Ben Morgan, Charlie Chapman and Johnny May are the other replacements. So Gloucester with Morgan there too, that's 6-2 for Gloucester. Chapman and May, the only two back replacements. And happy birthday to Johnny May, 33 years old today. Our referee is Mike Adamson. The atmosphere is pumping up with lots of pyrotechnics. He's assisted by Sam Grove Wright and Ian Kelly. Ben Blaine is our TMO. The match about to get underway. We're on the Gloucester 22 metre line from our commentary position behind the stand from which the players have their changing rooms. Again, we've got flames in front of us into the air. It's all action. It's a carnival atmosphere here in the west of France. All we're waiting for now is the referee to get matters underway. You can always feel, feel the heat in the back of this stand. Gloucester will receive the starting kick, so Antoine Hastoy, the 25-year-old, capped a couple of times by France a few years ago, is ready to get this game underway. Bearded, 
dark head outside half he looks around us this is a real pumping atmosphere which is a it's a bare pitch of the ground it is indeed and any game away from home uh, you're receiving the kickoff it's vital that Gloucester are strong in these first two or three minutes and remain error free and look after the ball and be strong they have to be an awful lot better than they were at Newcastle eight days ago where I felt they lost that game rather than Newcastle necessarily winning it they played as an individual they had a bit of white line fever they were untidy and they should really have won that was poor evening and many many Gloucester supporters are here enjoying the atmosphere of the town and they want to see an improved in performance if not that it's success successfully the icing on the cake but they realize it's a big challenge here we go Rona Ogara on the touchline prowling around like George Skivington still Antoine Hastoy waits to get the game underway. The countdown clock says three seconds to go. The referee, Rack Hadinson, is ready. We're ready. What an evening it will be here in our shows. Hastoy kicks to the far side, gets the game underway. Freddie Clark rushes up. Can he get possession from Gloucester? He does him. It's being picked up by Clement. Gets the offload back to 12 trees on Gloucester's 22. Pumps the ball down the ground. Gloucester appear to have that strong wind at their backs. So here come Larachal. A chip forward from fullback Bryce Doolan. Will land on Gloucester's 10 meter line. Take a Robert Ackerman who shouldered off the attention of Doolan very easily and carries one to half by line. But he spilled it in contact. A chance the home side to attack. Gloucester to be strong defensively. Good tackles. His ball's being carried forward there by second row forward Lavor. On it now is Skelton, he gets support and they work the near side, his rule stepping, going laterally on Gloucester's 10 metre line, trying to find a gap. Good defence from Gloucester holding up that attack and Alan Mano prominent on this near side, covering defensively as it goes out from Kerbalo to Atonio, who's upended, gets no real go forward, midfield on that Gloucester 10 metre line. Kerbalo to the far side again and still it's the men in predominantly yellow colours with the possession but it's an arm wrestle slow ball for Kerbalo nice handsome Aldrich then spread out wide to the dangerous rule a floated ball out to this near side and uh, a chance again now this time for winger forward take it forward but he spills it not forward but backwards the ball juggled by loose head prop scarfing we're back on the halfway line so good defensive resistance from Gloucester and here's Doolan stepping trying to find a gap doesn't really get through there Atonio now arrives some deep upended by Brock Vivas for Gloucester referee says that's okay the home crowd didn't like it play will continue so there's a gap in the midfield danger signs for Gloucester can they get the off to support it can't go to hand there the danger was from Bougarie the hook who find a nice bit of gap and his career a lovely live runner attacking from deep he gets isolated though inside Gloucester's 10 meter line and the chain right somewhat fortunate there they could have lost that decision from the referee but Mike Adamson says no he was not allowed to play the ball Richard Martin I think Gloucester would breathe a sigh of relief because Carreras was lacking support yes uh, it wasn't a clear release see that from here 100 yards away no problem good start from Gloucester they made their tackles they kept the La Rochelle attack at bay and although they had a lot of possession they made little ground so they'll be pleased with that early beginning and the penalty there is a bonus because as you say Andrew that could have gone the other way BBC Radio Gloucestershire joined by Five Live Sports Extra here at the Stade Marcel de France we played a couple of minutes and from the penalty Gloucester will advance to just outside the La Rochelle 22 on the far side of this ground big day for Seb Blake just a youngster 20 years old or so Floats the ball in, accurate in front, quickly down for Skipper Ludlow to Varney, then to 12, two trails, hold it back to Atkinson, a nice step from the youngster, evades one tackle, goes to ground midfield on the 22, and the blind side is worked by Varney, but it goes to a, a cluster of Gloucester players, and they can't take the ball securely, it's been nudged forward, they tried to move it quickly, but the precision was a little bit lucky there, and Freddie Clark looks a bit disgruntled as he gets back to his feet. Yeah, disappointing that, because it was a good position, they won good line-out ball, and set him well, and of course that's the balance, isn't it? They want to move draw the defender in move the ball quickly to pose a threat but of course even with short passes the wind can have an effect in this sort of situation they get such a bulky side you just wonder if that might be lost as best tactic as they also cope with the wind we think it's in their favor it's swirling as you implied earlier richard it's it's a win to be managed here yeah very much so there's a lot of practicing and oohing and ahhing at the kicking in the, the pre-match warm-up to decide which way it was going yeah a big blind side here for scrum half Kerbalo Tamara Kerbalo just Teddy Tomar we're actually standing on the home 20 to the scrum 20 meters in from that far touch and it's a good forward drive and Gloucester can be pinned they just couldn't resist the early pressure of that scrum they dropped it says the referee 
And there was absolutely no doubt that the whole of the front row just crumpled, didn't they? Yes, that, that would be sort of uh, clear to say Gloucester will not want too many scrums this afternoon, this evening, because very, very powerful pack, good technique as well, and that, that was an easy penalty for La Rochelle. Yeah, you don't see Gloucester's Russian ex wrestler and bobsleigh man, Kira Gotosev, go down like that very often, but he did there. Not at all, because he's a very strong scrummager. And off the left boot, they've taken play forward from that penalty to the Gloucester 10 metre line on the far side. No score as yet on maybe the Gloucester with five live sports extra, four and a half minutes played. Fusion reads the throw to Aldred at the front and a drive from that line out and Gloucester back pedalling defensively. Advantage the referee says to the home side and then on the 22, taking 10, 15, 20 metres forward. Now it'll come out, Kerbala spins the ball out wide. Danger for Gloucester, off his wing driving forward is... Tama recycled this near side, a grubber kick forward to within five metres of the Gloucester line, well read by Stephen Varney, did a good sweeper's job, he hoofs the ball down the park, referee Adams says no advantage to La Rochelle, a penalty midfield on Gloucester's 22, but they're showing signs of some slick play here aren't they? Very much so, that was sort of power in the scrum, followed by power from the line out and just roaring through the Gloucester defence. When they played the ball across the pitch then Gloucester looked strong enough with the tackling and sort of held them at bay. Looks as though they're going to kick for goal, Andrew, which uh, I think from a Gloucester point of view that would be a little bit of a sigh of relief after those huge warning signals that have come from the power play. Yeah, certainly was evident there, wasn't it? And the crowd applauding the call for the tee. And uh, outside half Antoine has to it, has it. Lewis Ludlow, Gloucester skipper, just checking with Mike Adamson what that was all about. And he was quite decisive. He looks to be lost a little bit impatient, rushing up at the breakdown. And this should be a regulation three points for Antoine Detroit. Head on to the post. There we are very quickly. Six minutes played here in La Rochelle. And the home side have the advantage. They lead by three points to nil. It's hard to deny them that. No, no. no. I suppose I expressed that uh, I was a little bit surprised that they didn't drive on and go for a power play near the line, but it's sort of pragmatic rugby, knockout rugby, take the points easily, start again. Thoughts of Richard Martin, I summarise with me, Andrew Pugh here in France, Billy Twelfties goes deep to the near side into the 22, taken by Aldred, virtually on his own line, looks up, looks for space, hint of a high tackle from Vivas for Gloucester, but uh, home crowd groaned, referee says no. We'll come back to this near side, Doolan off that left boot. Well, that shows the strength of the wind. It was a scruffy looking kick, almost a banana like kick, and found touch on Gloucester's 10 metre line, on the home size 10 metre line on this near side. Yes, I mean, kicking from the middle of the pitch, I think that's what they have to do because the wind is so strong. Nearer the touch lines, it has no effect until it gets high enough that, you know, the wind's coming in over the stand. Well, home side, uh, Gloucester dropped one man out, this line out. Clement has lost his man in the midfield. Savani for a good line out ball. 12 trees then to Atkinson. A dummy not taken by the home side body. Just sacked him to ground. Referee's an advantage to Gloucester. Home side not rolling away. So free ball for 12 trees. Who gets crunched in the tackle. It's ricocheted off a home leg. And Reese Sammer has it. He thinks he's got a run in on the far side. He's not going to get that. He's over the line. But uh, it's all going to be brought back. It's rather untidy. But the referee quite decisive in his call there. And Gloucester have a chance to level it up. This will test the breeze. 40 metre kick, head onto the posts. Yes, and uh, it should have the wind behind it. It was excellent line out that. It was absolutely at its limit. The throw was spot on, the catch was spot on, and the Mew moved the ball accurately and effectively, and it put the pressure on the La Rochelle defence and earned the penalty. Here's 40, 34 year old, not 40 yet, Billy 12 trees. 40 metres is the kick distance. Head onto the posts. We believe he's got the breeze. It seems to be those scudding clouds behind the stand on the opposite side to be the indication. And can he level it up? And the many Gloss supporters here will be delighted with that given they've been on the back for a little bit so far in this game with eight minutes played. Here's 12 trees then. Modern star round the corner kick. His long blonde hair very prominent. Rumours he might be leaving Gloucester this season. He's been a real stalwart servant after he came from Leicester Tigers, of course. Pumps his chest out. Wind blows his blonde hair around, looks up at the post to our right hand side, down at the ball again. Comes forward now, two steps and a strike, he's gone for precision, he's concerned about it, justifiably so, he's missed that one. 
He sliced it to the right hand upright. That's an opportunity missed for Gloss. It remains 3 0 to La Rochelle with eight and a half minutes played. Yeah, a shame that he missed that, Andrew. Those sorts of opportunities have to be taken. Said at the beginning, you know, at the early stages, try to remain error free. And if there is an opportunity, you've really got to take it. Astoy goes long. Twelve trees will take the ball cleanly, just inside Gloucester territory. To this near side is Ackerman. Looking for the space, wrapped up well. Varney to 12 trees again. 12 trees the offload to Clement. No look pass to Atkinson, then to Carreras. Attractive from Gloucester's Harris as it will straighten the effort. Runs straight into a, a big tackle. And we'll have to go to ground. And uh, his danger of being turned over. It's very well to get the ball back to Varney though. Then to 12 trees to Clement again. Another no look offload. Then turn to Gotosev, who goes to ground on Gloucester's 10 metre line. Varney to Clement again, who's very much the link man. Tight offload to Vivas, who takes the ball to ground on that 10 metre line. Varney's frustrated, now he has it to 12 trees on the far side. And the ball ricochets out the hands of Atkinson into Thomas' arms, and it will be turned over and recycled here. And the home crowd want to see it play through the hand. It's a cross for kick, trying to drop it behind the retreating Alamanu. He's an Argentinian, he's no soccer player, but he traps it with his boot and does very well 10 metres from the Gloucester line to protect Gloucester's possession. Gloucester wearing their pink shirts, white shorts here. And then Clement again is a willing workhorse so far for the Cherry and Whites. We'll grab a couple of metres forward, playing the game 15 metres in from the near touch line. Same distance from Gloucester's line. Extended guard is employed for Stephen Varney. And off his right boot, he punches the kick downfield for a decent clearance. And again, Gloucester supporters will, will breathe a sigh of relief, Richard Martin. Yes, a very good kick from Varney, good clear e exit from the tw 22, but, and the bonus, it was touched by a La Rochelle hand, so Gloucester have the throw in at this line out. It is fortuitous, isn't it? But in these early stages, when Gloucester have moved the ball quickly and accurately, they look as though they can stretch the La Rochelle defence. Yeah. Julio standing in the way of Seb Blake, trying to put him up with his arm race. Up goes Clark, quickly down to Varney in textbook station. On the 22 is 12 trees, then to Atkinson, a wide float of ball out, gets re-summit into action, re-summit, evading the tackle, this, the gas of the man. A lovely offload back to Harris as the tackle comes in. Did that go forward? The referee says play on. Gloucester on the 22. The offload is to Lewis Ludlow, takes the ball with a tumble onto that 22. Is Varney again, Gloucester looking promising. 12 trees, Harris to Atkinson again. Atkinson can't get the offload back and Gloucester protesting the ball was deliberately knocked on Ackerman protested the referee agreed it will be a Gloucester penalty on this near side they were building something there yes I, I think the in these early stages Gloucester getting the benefit of the refereeing decisions it look, looked as though that ball was forward over the other side of the pitch and then this one here a knock on given the deliberate great opportunity for Gloucester now to put this ball right near the goal line and get the driving ball into action. But the wide pass from Atkinson was astute because Reece Summer had a lot of space and Tomai drifted in field to give him that opportunity. And it was just a shame, ultimately it didn't come to anything, but 12 trees has decided not to go to the six this time. He will chip the ball towards the goal line on this near side. It's gone to touch 10 metres out. He might have wanted a bit further, but can Gloucester execute one of their, their textbook trademark driving moors here Richard. The well, sides are waiting for it now aren't they? Yes I mean La Rochelle it's a real strength of theirs too and this is it. Test the team by playing to their strengths. Late to throw. Alamano's at the back. It goes to Leaping Ludlow. Quickly ball down to Clark. Clark with the offload to Atkinson and through the gap goes Chris Harris. A wonderful drive for Gloucester. Training ground move. Brilliantly executed. La Rochelle 3. Gloucester 5. What a score for the Jerry Whites. Excellent. That's Gloucester saying, we're going to attack your strength with a rolling mall, and what did they do? Some brilliant swift handling, very accurate, and Chris Harris took the try under the post. Excellent. Wow. And it sort of gives an indication of the number of Gloucester supporters that are here in the stadium. They're in various pockets, and they're making themselves heard. That was quite magnificent because Ludlow had to, was under huge pressure for that line-out ball. And Jan Atkinson just signed a new contract, of course, joined Gloucester when Worcester had their financial problems. He's been a real acquisition. He looks like his namesake, Mark Atkinson, had a few more pounds perhaps, but give him time, he's going to become a very good player. Yes, very much so. 12 trees virtually under the crossbar will get his sand wedge out, ship it over. It's Stad Rachel there, or La Rochelle 3, Gloucester 7. Could you believe it, Richard? Well, I think already Gloucester are showing if they do the things they can do well and they do them properly, they can just be a threat to La Rochelle. It's just giving them something to think about at the moment. Now they have to defend this kickoff. And they go to the far side. 
and it's hanging in the wind precariously very well taken ultimately by Freddie Clark it seemed to almost go up and then just hang there for three or four seconds it's good judgment by Clark and then Varney from inside his 22 puts a steepling Gary Owen downfield Ollie Thorey chasing this one taken well by Doolan Thorey half scrags it but then he gets a, a second breath and powers away back onto his own 10 metre line far side of the pitch recycled his old read beats the tackle of Vivas the bearded Argentinian who's been out for most of the season since he joined lost with an arm injury now I shall moving it on this near 10 metre line good tackle by Atkinson holding that particular attack Attack. Recycled by Kerb Barlow, to support provided by second row forward Lavo, and then kicked by Larishal. Crossfield kicking, it's clean the breeze, taken by Varney on Gloucester's 10 metre line. He's shipping downfield for space. Was that a late tackle on him? It is a late tackle, the referee says. Varney just side to ground. Apologies from Bujari. Carreras comes up. And we go back for where that uh, ball landed for a penalty for Gloucester, virtually 12, 10 metres from the La Rochelle line. And Lewis Ludlow having a word. It was very late on Varney. The board left his boot by some way. The home crowd don't like it. They want it reviewed. Our television match official is Ben Blaine. They're not going to get it, I don't think, Richard. I think they ought to look at it, yeah. Sorry. I think they ought to look at that. He's made contact with his head. But he was in the air long before, I think, before Varney had kicked. So, yes. an interesting one for them to have a look at. It's a physical mismatch anyway. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I, I think the penalty is sufficient. The conversation me. is continuing. The referee is looking at one of the large screens here. The home crowd on his back, predictably. And uh, discussions finished. Varney, meanwhile, has been getting some treatment back in the Gloucester half. He's on his feet. Resilient character. Interesting background, isn't he? Stephen Lorenzo Varney. He's got Italian ancestry, he's a Welsh speaking native. He's playing his rugby in Gloucestershire. Uh, Shalaka Marag and Dial, yeah. <laughs> and there's uh, one on my left hand side, too, <laughs> yes. Similarities with the game in Bordeaux recently, where Gloucester surprised Bordeaux and they did some silly things, giving away penalties like that, that gave Gloucester further opportunities. It's 12 trees. Not quite head onto the post, but it should be well with his compass. It's deep inside the 22. Can he extend Gloucester's lead? For a French crowd, they're remarkably quiet, actually, has to be said. 12 trees looking at the post, swaying a tad. Two very precise step forward and a little chip again. He's nailed it. It's La Rochelle 3, Gloucester 10. Here in the west of France, and Gloucester supporters scattered around the ground, delighted. Yes, very good. And as you say, Andrew, it is most unusual. But I've noticed this before when we've been in La Rochelle, when a visiting side's kicking for goal, they're quiet. Again, they go to the far side with the restart. Ackerman waits and takes under no particular pressure. Tamar led the chase, but he was screened nicely by the Gloucester supporting players to Ackerman. They've taken it forward onto the 22, and they've been in danger of being rucked off their own ball here. It's very physical at the breakdown. Varney calls for extras to arrive. They've done just that, just Anamano standing off and there's a pod on the blind side, but Varney will kick it off his boot up into the air, gets a very high kick from the Italian scrum half, taken by Doulan, close to touch, good chase led by Ludlow and also Thorley is there for Gloucester, but it will remain home ball, the many years had at Gloucester, very aggressive defensively, they can't get over that halfway line yet, now Unia will use all his 23 stone bot to do just that, but uh, just halted inside home territory. It's a real arm wrestle up front at the moment, Great competition for the ball. From Kerbalo to Skelton. Skelton with the offload. And there's danger out wide. There's suddenly there's a burst of acceleration. The referee's called a stop because there's a Gloucester player. Well, I think it's Goto Sev in yeah. the way. The passenger play on the far side. Home crowd don't like it. They thought they were in. Yes, I can understand them not liking it because they were uh, three or four under two then. But it, the, the play was going right into that area. And the referee had no option, really. 3-10 in Gloucester's favour with 16 minutes played. The referee has blown his whistle. The clock has stopped. And interestingly, Jamal Ford Robinson for Gloucester is warming up. So I wonder whether Gota Sev is in some trouble out there. He's on his feet. He's getting treatment. He's a tough old warrior, the Russian. Yeah, it looked as though it was the lower back that the problem was with. Yeah, he's been he's down on one knee now. 
and uh, getting some further medical support. Please do get in touch. If you're listening on BBC Radio Gloucester, you can WhatsApp us on 08000 321 3. Text us 81333. To both those messages, WhatsApp or text, preface your message with the word GLOSS, G-L-O-S, or you can tweet us at BBC GLOSS. It'd be good to hear from you this afternoon or this evening, as it is now here in France. And uh, Steve Kitchen, our presenter back in the studio, will sweep their messages up and read them out at half-time. Ford Robinson is still prowling on the touchline. Is he going to see some early game action? Yeah, I think so far with this first. Oh, it's thing. a head on head contact, actually. Gotosev, it's Bougery again. Gotosev goes in to make the tackle low. And he connects with the side of Gotosev's head as he carries the ball into the contact. What's your thinking about that, Richard? Yes. Six to one, half a dozen the other. It may well be an HRA. Uh, yeah. On comes Ford Robinson. Yeah, and the resilient so. Russian is going off. He doesn't look dazed or confused does he but maybe it's a precaution for the medical staff and one of them is escorting him off the pitch yeah it was a heavy contact wasn't it and the both of them were so low the ball carrier was about a foot off the ground and so was the tackler yeah we'll see if uh, he'll be back he's such a, a strong yeah strong man against a front row like this you need your strongest players well i think glosser will be pleased in this first 15 minutes with their their tackling their, their work at the breakdown and their ability to change into attack mode very swiftly and very very accurately. Well, what sporting applause has Gota Seth left the pitch into the dressing room? He's going for an HA, I fancy. And on comes Ford Robinson, straight into a scrum. He's going to be up against 21 stone, 8 pounds, Joel Sclavi, the Argentinian. One introduction, the home crowd now in good voice. You can probably hear in the background. It's a cracking atmosphere here. It really is, isn't it? It's, I think it's my favourite French club to come to, actually, it Richard. Is, yeah. yeah, marvellous. Yeah, what else could you want? Good scrummage, a solid scrummage got a better scrummage. Up pops on the far side, Vivas. There's a turn on it. It would be played, I think. No, it won't be played. Audrey picks it up. The referee does finally penalise Gossip, but it was better initially. It was better. They just swung it round rather than losing metres there. Yes. Worked hard and resisted as long as they could, but it, it again, the, the penalty looked inevitable. And I'm sure this will be punched down the ground by Bruce Rice Dulac. Uh, 32, the former Racing Castro Argen fullback, 36 caps to his name. He's a decent touch finder, 10 metres from the Gloucester line. This is a big moment in this game as we edge our way towards the second quarter. A home line out, 10 metres from the Gloucester line, far side of the pitch. Home crowd sense blood, don't they? They do. They yeah. do indeed. Big yeah. moment, as you say, Andrew. Bougerie to throw, lots of movement, goes to Aldri, takes the ball. Almost diagonally, here comes that drive, lost to spinning it round, they spin it to three, then the home side have just broken away, they may have done themselves no good there, they've gone to ground five metres on the Gloucester line, Kerbalo waits, Lewis Lander tries to come up the middle illegally, to a fairly static, and here comes Julio waiting, he's not going to get it though, he'll go to Bottio, tries to barge his way through a very big tackle, the Gloucester player trapped on the ground there, will be played by Kerbalo, it's time to Dante offloads to Rule on his shoulder. Kerbalo this time to Audrey. Audrey runs straight into Ruin Acker, makes a very good tackle, sub metres to the Gloucester line. We're now playing the game 15 metres in for this near touch line. Again to the front row union, the home front union. Gloucester all over them, scrambling defensively, working very hard. Here comes Julio again, a big tackle made again. Kerbalo this time to Gossi. There's a gap there. Oh, almost through. Gossi just holding up the ball. A brilliant tackle from Harris. Advantage as a referee, a penalty offence. And Harris is involved a little bit after is there. I don't know why. It's Will Skelton all over him. The six foot eight lock. Penalty confirmed, but huge pressure on Gloucester there, Richard Martin. Huge pressure. Gloucester were res resisting very effectively and getting away with a little bit at the breakdown. And now there's a scrum. And the home crowd like this. They like the, the call of this scrum. And why not when Nuno is 23 stone 6 pounds, his fellow prop is a, a, a lightweight 21 stone 8 pounds, and of course behind them is a 22 stone second row forward in Skelton. There's a lot of bulk out there. This is, a, this is a huge, huge scrum for Gloucester. If they can do anything other than concede a penalty or a try from this, they'll have achieved a huge result. Yes. Jack Clements takes a big and take a breath at the back of the Gloucester scrum. His feet are just two or three metres from the line. There's a blind side, which uh, Wigger 
12 is fringing on. In it goes to Kerbalo. He popped up in the front of the home row, uh, popped up, advantage replay, there's lost Hackey downfield, it came out loosely. The home tight head, he went up in the air, Sclavi, the Argentinian. And just for a moment, you wonder whether Gloucester might get the referee's decision. He didn't like it. And down on the ground, it's a big presence. It's the presence of a, is a it certain... Antonio? Is it Antonio? Antonio. He's on his back. Concerned from the home crowd. Aldrete has a word with his loose head who popped up and slaps him on the back. And Chris Harris, he got a bit of a stinger on his arm there, but that was some tackle he brought off before the penalty was awarded. Indeed, and yeah. The bearded Antonio, Samoan in origin, played in New Zealand, of course, and then came here. There's an ice pack on his right shoulder area, chin area, he's back on his feet. Yes, I think the Gloucester pack did very well to disrupt that scrum, and in the early stages, it almost looked as though the La Rochelle loose head had gone up early. Yeah. But once again, another massive scrum. Oh, Dries has something sprayed on his hands. Perhaps he's getting better purchase on the ball at the back of that La Rochelle scrum. Here we go again, Groundhog Day. Huge pressure will be applied. This time we're 17, 18 metres in from this near touchline. Five metres in the Gloucester line. Billy Twelty's intense conversation with Lewis Three Summit on this near side. And it's a big blind side. There's two men occupying it here. What's going to take place here? Something's afoot, you fancy. In from Kerbalo. I'm sure they went early. Gloucester protesting as they go on to ground. The referee says advantage and Kerbalo is trying to snipe. Ackerman wraps him up, drives him back half a metre. Good work by Ruin Ackerman. Holding that choke tackle style, but the referee's already playing advantage at home, so they take it to ground. Gloucester, I think, suggesting that they went early at that scrum. Now a shell. Aldrin plays the linkage to his front row Sklavi. Held six metres out. Now the off go back to Bottia. He's held. Kerbalo. He's still to go wider. Good work defensively from Atkinson again. Kerbalo. Aldreed. Tackle made. Five metres out. Still advantage. Suddenly there's a space. And Gosso just shut the door tightly. and needed to. There's more space now. Bougerie is over. He dies over. American soccer style. Bodies are on the ground. He leapt over the top. Home crowd enjoyed that moment. Larachal there in the gap. Larachal 8. Gloucester 10. 22 minutes played in this first half. That was all about pressure, wasn't it? All about pressure. Yay! Gloucester tackling hugely well, resisting and resisting, but the power and the, p the pace at which they were going into the contact, it made the try inevitable. What would be interesting now, La Rochelle have had to work very hard to get their first try after, what, 20 minutes or so. This next five minutes will be critical for Gloucester to hold it steady and not let them run away with that. And the uh, conversion is just head on to the post, in fact. A story the outside half takes the ball back. He's 12 metres on the line, straight on. And the home crowd just sensed the opportunity, and finally they took it, Larish, after some stout resistance, admirable resistance for a while, Richard. But uh, this should be a, an easy two pointer for Antoine Astoy. There it goes. Astoy adds the extra two. What a game here, 10 apiece. And we're into the second quarter, well into the second quarter. Yeah, so from the click-off now, Gloucester will be looking to put this, I would suggest, deep into the La Rochelle territory and try and play the next five minutes in the La Rochelle half and just sort of steady the game down a little bit Yeah, now. I'd agree, stabilise the situation. That's what they need to do. Still no sign of Kiri Gotasev coming back for Gloucester. 12 trees just bounces the ball on the ground a couple of moments. Kick it to this near side in the brilliant sunshine now. It's a deep kick into the 22 old Reed waits, but he allows Dulan to take it. Near that uh, outside of the boot kick. It's not particularly attractive. It's a scruffy touch finder. And Gloss will have the line out midway between the home 22 and 10 metres line. 10 apiece on BBC Radio Gloss show with five live sports extra. That was a good kick, good pressure from the kick, and now an opportunity just inside the 10 metre line in the uh, La Rochelle half. Game possession, keep possession. 
and just settled it a bit. So Blake with the head guard on, spins the walk, goes long to Freddie Clark at the back, crisply down to Varney, then to Twelve Trees, Twelve Trees back in, then that offload to Clement is on his shoulder, grabs a couple of metres, Varney again, Varney to Carreras, a nice step evading Big Antonio, but then he slips and he's surrounded by a posse of home forwards who turned the ball over, that was a lucky for Carreras, and they're going to go to go, here's trying to over Bougerie, he takes the tackle on the 10 metre line, his own 10 metre line, loose head prop, Sclavi in close attendance, now to Union, no look offload, in a wide ball out, taken on the bounce by Wigger Fulver, did very well there, shoulders off one tackle, takes it to ground on halfway, close to the near touch, infield from Curbaro to the long-legged skeleton, there's a home player down on one knee, his play will continue around him, from Rule, rifles the ball out wide to, to Bossier, Bossier, headband prominent, Nicely recycled to Dulan. Dulan with offload to Toma. A chip forward tries to place it behind Reese Samick. Bobbles into 12 trees. Has. No, it doesn't. Tell him. Toma has it. And Toma shoulders off the attentions of 12 trees. And Rose Waters will quite a soft finish in for a fairly easy touchdown. That was a little bit sloppy from Ross on the far side. They gave Larochelle a chance and Toma pounced and took it easily. Larochelle. Well, they get their noses in front now. 15 10 that lead after Toma's try. And Gloucester will look back on that moment. Do you think they could have done better, Richard? Oh, very much so, because that, that few moments there, the La Rochelle side came to life, their eyes were lighting up, they could see the opportunity and they took it, even though the last bit was a bit of a fumble between Billy Twelve Trees and Lewis Reed Summit. But it all came from an excellent piece of work from Skelton. He's so big and strong, he took on, I can't see which Gloucester player it was, but he just literally took the ball off him. Yes. Steve Evan is leaving the pitch. So then Charlie Chapman will come on. Yeah, Doesn't Chapman's that? on already. Yeah. Boy from Matson in Gloucester. He's a Scottish ancestry. You wouldn't know it talking to him. And he's on as Varney leaves the scene, hobbling somewhat. After that, um, Bashi took. More challenging conversion from Antoine Hastoy, just outside the 22, 14 metres in from the far touch. Again, the breeze is a factor in his face, but it seems to have just dropped a little bit, comes forward now, Foley in his face, as he runs up, as he nailed the conversion, he's missed it, and that's a surprise, both touch shows have looked at each other, it remains 15-10, and at least lost it, and uh, see two more points, ratcheting up on the home side's scoreboard to our right-hand side. Yes, and I think, you know, that was just what La Rochelle needed because they've had to work hard to get the first score and just what Gloucester didn't need. So the same applies now, really. Gloucester need a good kick, they need a good chase, and they need to stay in the La Rochelle half for a few minutes. To our trees against this near side, the sun is bright. It's taken well by Doolan. That's a better looking kick off his left boot, but not much distance on it. And Old Reed claiming it should be far further down the, the park. Overruns where the touch judges. The officials wearing their white tops, dark shorts. And uh, what can Gloucester fashion from here? Almost an identical situation to after the previous score, Andrew. Good opportunity, secure possession, and make good use of it. Yep. Yeah. And uh, late to throw. Taken by Alan Marley, quickly down to Chapman, to 12 trees, 12 trees to the offload, but he's actually wrapped up. Fierce tackle by scrum half Kerbalo, and 12 trees is enveloped with his tackle, and the offload wasn't quite precise enough. Gloucester running some nice lines into that support on 12 trees' shoulder, it just didn't quite go to hand. Yeah, Kerbalo was brilliant then, he read where that ball was going, he set off like a sprinter, a diagonal run, and he wanted to just say to the Gloucester player, look out, he's coming at high speed, and brilliant play. Yeah, that's right. 15-10, now shall lead. With a decent display so far from Gloucester. We just that bit of clinical S which is so evident when Now Shall finish that try up on the far side has been just been lacking worryingly at times for Gloucester, but they're still in this game. Yes. But the home crowd they enjoyed this moment. And yeah. this could be a great scrum to give the La Rochelle pack a surprise and get something from the scrum because yeah. it's a dangerous position to lose a scrum again. Yeah, midfield. Just uh, with Jack Clement's boots for Gloucester on the La Rochelle 10 metre line. And they've got a 2 4 split in their backs here. Kerbalo trying to shield Chapman out of the way. Taken off the back by Aldreed. Aldreed running towards 12 trees. Gets the offload back to Estoy and then out wide it goes. But that's a sloppy ball. A very sloppy ball from centre rule. Rather harmless, he goes into touch. Yeah, and Gloucester will be really pleased with that scrum. The pack held strong, it was a good scrum, they were competitive, that'll give them big encouragement and they've ended up then 
with the line out just inside the La Rochelle half. Another opportunity, win the ball, keep the ball for a few phases at least. Yep. Late to throw, lost of dropped out Ford Robinson also Clement quickly down from Ludlow at the front to 12 trees from a floated ball from Chapman but Atkinson gets the ball and the attentions of Aldry at the same time does well to protect Gloucester's possession and then the pass from Chapman into the arms of Ackerman looked a tad forward the home crowd called it the referee agrees home yeah. scrum and that, that's going to be the tension when La Rochelle have got the ball they've got many options but they've got the power they've got the pace when Gloucester have got the ball they've got to play it as tight as possible to the line, be as slick as possible. There are signs they can break the La Rochelle defence doing that, but the downside is it might be forward or it might be mishandled. So yeah. they've, got, they've got to play on the brink, really. Just looking at Santi Carreras, we haven't seen much of him, have we, in this game? Just that slip on the near side earlier on, but he's been fairly quiet. Yes, he's a man who can create something from deep, isn't he? Very much so. Chris Harris just shouting at him. The home ball, of course virtually on halfway. Kerbala taking a long time. The referee perhaps being quite precise in his instructions. Here it goes from the Kiwi. They go down the front rows. The referee says we'll have to reset that one. They both went down together to be frank. And they'll do it all over again. Le Corsair or Le Maritime is the home side's name. That's their nickname. Led by an Irishman, Ron O'Gara. Of course, all his support staff is one. Donahill Ryan. That's a name from the past, a blast from the past. Yes. Very, very effective coaching team, obviously, because this club has grown and grown over the last five or six years. Amazing, amazing success, and it's thoroughly appreciated by the people in the locality. Absolutely. Who've been so welcoming, wonderful reception. Yeah, they welcome you here. They make it a tad hostile in the ground, but it's all good stuff afterwards, isn't it? That's, that's what you want. That's what you get from rugby, isn't it? Yes, indeed. That's what you want. Kurt Barrow, trial over again. They've engaged in scrum. Chap was protesting for some reason. It's a solid scrum from Gloss. It's a good scrum. They're going to try and give it a go. Played by Aldry to Kerbala. Switch play to this near side. Has Stoy to the reaching centres. And then popped out wide for Fulver. He's got a little bit of space, but we stand with his end. Harris again. Wonderful defence of Chris Harris. He is so very good, isn't he? With support. Back to his winger, Reece Savitt. And they drove the man into touch. It will be a Gloucester line out just inside the visitors' territory. That was very good collective defence from the Gloucester backs because La Rochelle were looking dangerous then. They had various options and even though the passing was accurate, the Gloucester defenders, Harris and Rhys Samet, they did very well to snuffle that and put him into touch. Yep, 32 minutes played, 15-10 in La Rochelle's favour. Gloucester called a four-man line out. A lot of movement in it. Is there too much? Almost. Freddie Clark gets it down to Chapman to 12 trees. And here's Carreras. Switch play to his near side to Reece Samet. He looks up. Big French forwards in his face. He's trying to find a gap. He's gone laterally. No change there. Sides to ground. Chapman will have the ball though under some pressure. And he will kick it off his right boot. A tester for him. The chase is led by Clement. Clement can't quite get his hands on two line. Does very well to step him. But then he's brought to ground on his own 10 metre line. Back it goes to try score Bujari on a lateral run. Beats the tackle and does very well. Also, he's spilled forward. Good tackle from Atkinson again for Gloucester. Carreras opportunity to play there. What's he going to do? He's going to kick Ho. A driven low kick, trying to pop it behind Wigger Folk. And he takes it wonderfully well over his head. Cricketers catch from the left winger and then finds a very good touch on this near side. That's, that's tidy for the left winger, isn't it? Well, top class, international class, and equally, you said a while ago, Santi Carreras has been quiet. We've hardly seen him, and we've seen him twice in the last five minutes. Minutes, and that's what Gloucester will want tonight is him being anonymous and then suddenly appearing and doing something spectacular highly skillful which is his trademark yeah seven minutes away from half time still that five point advantage but it's a Gloucester line out on halfway along to the back to Lewis Lando quickly down Chapman poor pass to 12 feet reaches low nicely works and here's Thorley in space lovely handling of midfield Thorley on the 10 metre line he's got Reece Hammond outside here's the sprinter Reece Hammond evades one tackle can he find Thorley in support he can't quite held five metres to the line close to touch Gloucester need quick more they've got it here's Clements giving it a drive Clement held five metres out Slow a ball this time for Chapman, burrowing in. He rifles the pass out to 12. He's Ed Atkinson. Atkinson, another wide ball out. Clark on the wing. Clark for the line. Clark for Gloucester. Did he get it down? The referee says he did. A fine finish. Intelligent play from Gloucester. Will it be reviewed? That should be 15 apiece. The referee's looking up. But what vision from Gloucester? At 
Atkinson, magnificent twice in that move, and Clark gets the plaudits. He's levelling up for Gloucester, the conversion to come, and we've got six minutes remaining in the half. I, I think whatever happens in this game today, Gloucester will take a huge amount away from this first 30 minutes because they've been able to match the power and strength of La Rochelle on a number of occasions and when they've had decent possession they've actually posed a huge threat to one of the best teams if not the best team in Europe and if you can do that you can threaten anybody so that's a great play from Gloucester and actually that final bit it looked as though Rhys Samit was in and he didn't quite get there but they had the confidence and the perseverance to come back across the pitch and Here's put it a review down. on the big screen Richard to our left six foot five Freddie Clark in the air gets down with pressure and the ref is happy with that so is Ben Blair he was athletic he was in the air he's an athletic looking second row forward usually a back row in the past of course played against sevens rugby as well Freddie Clark and the boy from London did wonderfully well there his 12 trees virtually on the touchline can he had the extra two points what a Philip that will be with five minutes remaining in this half here on your BBC locally and nationally two steps and they strike he's to draw that ball round but the wind's not helping that he sliced it to the uprights, it remains tied at 15 apiece. But what a try that was. And Gloucester's two speedsters in union on the far side initially, Richard, with Thorley and then Reece Summit hunting together. Yeah, excellent. And, and what caused that break was what I was talking about earlier, playing on the brink, playing the pass as late as possible and creating the gap. And the finish from Clark, top class. What a game, Atkins Sammy so far. The restart is down the middle. Carreras in the air, taken out illegally. Easy penalty for Glosser. Soft play from winger Teddy Tomar. He didn't need to do that. And thankfully, Carreras didn't seem to hit the ground too heavily. He's just limping slightly. The slight looking Argentine. He's a tough old customer, though, isn't he? Oh, he's great. And that was a, that was a foolish foul, really, wasn't it? Because it was a sort of half hearted knock him over he wasn't going for the ball or anything it was as though he couldn't be bothered to take himself out of the way and it, it if Gloucester have got ambition in the game they want to be getting some points from this next two or three minutes they've got position on the 10 meter line in the La Rochelle half let's get the ball let's put them under pressure let's see what they can do with our fast moving accurate backs Reece it? Samit is just revving up I think <laughs> just getting warm his engine's getting warm it's a decent kick from 12, it's the penalty, taking Gloucester onto the home 10 metre line on this near side. In from Blake to Alamana this time, juggle ball to Chapman, he's got a bit of space, he's found space, he's broken one tackle. He's towards the 22, he's done really well Charlie Chapman after initial juggle. Ludlow plays scrum half to Blake to 12, he's lost to playing Chris Rebby, again that floats a ball out, but taken in the air, intelligent by Dylan, he flings it onto the ground, picked up by Gloucester and bundled to touch, out wide is re it by Jonathan Dandy. And just for a moment, it's a heart in mouth moment. You thought Gloucester had spilled the ball for a run in to the home side, didn't you? I think you'll need to lie down in a minute, <laughs> Andrew. This game is getting more and more frantic. Brilliant play from both sides. Looked like an interception and a La Rochelle try in the making. But once again, from that line out, Kerr Barlow was up going at 90 miles an hour. Chapman spotted it and he went on his own, went through the gap. Really good play. This is great European rugby to watch, isn't it? Secure ball at the front is taken by Lavo. The partner in crime, Will Skelton. They're back inside their own half, close to the far touchline, and getting no go forwards. This tempted driving more, good resistance. Now they're trying to swing it round to the open side and get some more men. So Gloucester have done well, but Kerbalo's found space. He's breaking tackles. He's onto Gloucester's 10 metres, and still he's going. Finally, he's brought to ground by the retreating Clement as he approaches Gloucester's 22. A wide, wide ball out. Danger for Gloucester, his rule, rule with a, a step and a dummy, half forward. Floater ball goes into hands of Reece Samet, off those to Carreras. Carreras will grab it downfield into home territory. Aldrit is there, pressurised by Reece Samet. Takes the ball on his 22. He's knocked it forward, has he? Recycled to Harris. Harris for the line, back to Carreras. And Carreras for Gloucester to touch the ball down. Amazing stuff from Gloucester. Sloppy in turn from the home side, but Gloucester took the opportunity. And the lead here with a minute and a half remaining in this first half. Remarkably in Lawishaw, 15 points to 20. I said you'd need to lie down, Andrew. The, uh, the play has got even more frantic. Again, some brilliant in pieces of the play from players on both sides. But Rhys Samet used his brain then, right down in front of us. He was tempted to go. He slipped the ball to the to Santi Carreras and then lovely kick through and a chase excellent piece of play but uh, almost in the sunshine 
they're trying to play too much rugby. And uh, it, it's, it's interesting to see La Rochelle make the sort of errors that we've accused Gloucester of in the past. And uh, they took advantage, didn't they? Very much so, and it seems to me at the moment... It's being checked, though. It's being checked here. <laughs> What's the referee going to say? Yeah. Not surprised. I think there were about three or four things that could be checked. Well, just as we thought. And La Rochelle, I think they got the referee's decision. Now, what's taking place is, is the offload from Harris back to Carreras. Was that forward? The referee said Goss have pushed off the ball. There was a push off the ball, took the La Rochelle defender out. As Harris went advance downfield, we'll wipe that try off. That's a shame. With a minute 12 seconds remaining in this half, what might have been. And a story the outside half will find touch on Gloucester's 10 metre line. What Gloucester do not want to do with a minute remaining in this half is concede points, Richard. Very much so. Th apiece. This is a big defensive line out. As La Rochelle will be stinging after that try, even though it's been removed. Really important for Gloucester to stay strong at this moment. Yeah, with a replacement on for La Rochelle in the front row, in from Bougerie. Gloucester coming to Ludlow, almost gets his hands on the ball. And uh, here comes La Rochelle trying to mount a drive, once it's the call to Kerbalo. He's always looking up for opportunities, isn't he? Wide ball out, inaccurate, taking over shoulder by rule to Dulin. The tackle made from Gloucester. It needed to be to Atkinson, but really gap up the middle of Pierce for La Rochelle, and they're driving forward over that 10 metre line. Kerbalo burrows in again. This will be the last play of the half. Can Gloucester just resist this pressure? Ackerman with the tackle, taken out off the ball by Laveau, but the referee says play on. Kerbalo, to a fairly static replacement prop who's on. Number 17, confirm that shortly. Kerbalo again to Aldrid. Advantage to the referee says to the home side, so they're going to give it a go, they might as well. The penalty will be awarded midfield on the Gloucester 10 metre line. It's been turned over by Gloucester at the breakdown. No advantage, and that's a shame. This is pretty kickable, this opportunity. And you'd assume, you'd assume they will go to the post with time up on the clock, Richard. Uh, you'd assume, yes, definitely go for the post. I would fear if they went for the corner, and Aldridge has just signalled for the post. Um, La Rochelle being sensible again because I think part of what's happened because Gloucester are trying to play a very fast game once they have possession it's sort of sucked La Rochelle into doing the same thing and they when they get in good possession they're trying to move the ball a bit too quickly to the wider areas of the pitch you know and in yeah. doing so the, the passing isn't accurate it's a windy day the ball moves about and they, they've made some for them very naive and silly mistakes. The man's gone off is Joel Sclavi, the Argentinian. He's been replaced by Reynaud Wardy. Got seven French caps since 2022. So he's no mug. Here's Antoine Astoy to see if he can snatch the lead back. 38 metres out, a low, lead, low drill kick. Ricochet's off the upright into the arms of Jamal Ford Robinson in front of the post. Almost seemed to knock it forward. Referee says play on. Just hack it into touch, boys. Surely must be the call here. It goes from Chapman to 12 trees. Cross field kick, they're spaced out wide for Thorny though. The adventurous opportunity taken. Thorny gets the ball, offloads it back, and then Carreras <laughs> does do the same thing. He will hack it into touch. Time is up at half time. That's what the referee says. And what a half it's been. 15 apiece. Lost of supporters where came more in hope and expectation, but their side has delivered, I suggest, in this half, Richard Martin. Well, really spirited display from Gloucester. It shows they're very much together as a group. The Gloucester players will be going in feeling pleased with what they've achieved in this first half. The La Rochelle players will be going in very disappointed and feeling they could have done much better with the opportunities they had. And it's, it's got that feel about it that the one team is very much stronger and they can't quite get a grip on it. And the team that's sort of the underdog, if you like, is matching some of the strength, but also really posing an amazing threat once they have the ball in hand. Absolutely absorbing, hasn't it? Yeah, because... Because, you know, there's a phrase, go for it, and they're looking to go for it. And you were saying at the end of that last few seconds there, kick it into touch. And actually, Billy 12 Street said, what do you know, Andrew? Let's <laughs> get it out to the wing. Thor, you'll me. score from here and we'll beat them, you know. So it, that's what rugby at this level, that's your best chance, I think. Everything you wanted from this game really so far, isn't it? Uh, can Gloucester just keep it up, I suppose, is the question. The quality of their bench will come into play. It's a 6 2 split on both sides, isn't it? So that's a, a big, big significant factor here. And they've already had to bring on Charlie Chapman, 
And we haven't seen the reappearance of front row forward Kieran Dochasev either. So Jafal Robinson, who's done pretty well, he has come on, yes. maybe playing the rest of the game. So Gloss have done very well here as we reflect on that first half. In fact, both sides scorelines mirroring each other. And Antoine Hastoy gave the opportunity to stand Rochelet with a penalty in the sixth minute. He nailed that one, 12 3, missing one for Gloss a couple of minutes later. But he did add the extra to Chris Harris's training ground move try. Lovely interplay in midfield. Chris line out more down. Atkinson involved, the youngster's been prominent for Gloucester in his first half, and Harris slipping over, delighted to touch the ball down. That converted by 12 trees, and it's 3-7 in Gloucester's favour in the 13th, and it then 3-10, 12 trees, and then a penalty, just showing Gloucester's advantage at that stage, but then disappointingly, Five minutes later, they conceded two tries, a brace of tries in three minutes, one to Hooker Bougeri after sustained pressure on the Gloucester line. They worked the phases and he died over the top. American soccer star to drop the ball down, converted by Astor, an easy two pointers, to level it out. Then Thomas try after some sloppy defensive work by Gloucester out wide, he's summit in 12 trees, getting a bit of a mess. He dotted the ball down in the corner, rather softly given up that one by Gloucester, unconverted. Clark's try and leveled it out, unconverted opportunity. Again, good vision from Gloucester. Gloucester, good patience in the phases and good work by those two speedsters, Reece Samson and Thorley out wide and a floated ball to Clark and a, a dynamic athletic finish in the corner. That end converted, 15 apiece. We thought it might have been a, a better situation for Gloucester half-time because Carrera seemed to stroll over. That was disallowed, but it remains 15 apiece at half-time. Great first half, much to look forward to. La Rochelle 15, Gloucester 15. Thank you very much. What a thrilling first half of European knockout rugby. Andrew Pugh and Richard Martin, your commentary team here on BBC Radio Gloucestershire and BBC Radio 5 Live Sport Extra. Steve Kitchen. BBC Radio Gloucestershire. Uh, let's get you up to date uh, with some other rugby taking place at the moment in the Women's Six Nations. It's Scotland 10, Wales 12. That's uh, coming to the end of the first half at the moment. Salisi Tuapalotu, one of the uh, two try scorers for Wales, the Gloucester Hartbury uh, player uh, on the try scoring uh, run for Gloucester and also now for Wales as well. Scotland 10, uh, Wales uh, 12, the latest uh, just coming up to half time in that game in the Women's Six Nations. Uh, in football, uh, it's Chelsea nil, Aston Villa 1 at half time in the Premier League and it's a 10th uh, goal of the season in the league for Ollie Watkins, which separates the side. Chelsea nil, Aston Villa won at the latest scoreline there. Uh, let's go back to a rugby then. And of course, it is Women's Six Nations weekend and uh, quite a few of the Gloucester Hartbury women on uh, display for England tomorrow. Four of them on duty as the Women's Six Nations continues. Zoe Oldcroft switches to number eight to Tanya. Tanya Hurd uh, comes in at centre, while Sarah Beckett and Emma Singh are both on the bench for tomorrow's match against Italy at Franklin's Gardens. England, of course, kicked off their defence of the Grand Slam last weekend, beating Scotland 58-7 at Kingston Park. But after such a convincing victory, how much did coach Simon Middleton learn? What I learned last week was that we've got a squad that can develop very quickly and deliver a game plan that we put down first time we put it down in front of them which i think shows you the level that some of the those players are operating at a couple of specific bits we really wanted to go after and we got them and within that i think we showed some really good combinations and that was really pleasing so we learned quite a lot it surprised me a little bit i think we were a little bit further on than what i thought we were going to be but i think that's also a trait of what I've learned about coaching the women's team is that when we do a lot of training and drill orientated stuff, you don't get your best out of them. If you go into situations where it's very reactive, game orientated, less time to think about it and just be more reactive, you get a better product and a better outcome. And that's what we got last week. I thought it was a really good performance. In the media this week and also in your press conference, it has been highlighted there might be a chink in England's armour in goal kicking. How have you reacted to that this week in training? Yeah, I mean, we've got a kicking coach who comes in now as working with the team each week. We've had that model before. We've had a really successful or a more successful kicking game off the tee with that. We changed the model last year because of the dynamics of the programme were a little bit different. I don't think it worked for us. And 
it also doesn't help when you've got your two best goal kickers unavailable in Emily Scarra and Zoe Harrison. But we're working on it to try and support the girls because they're putting the time in, they're putting the effort in, but they need guidance. It's a specific skill, it's like line out throwing, which gets coached a lot more regularly, I feel, and it appears than goal kicking across the clubs as well. And I'm sure it varies from club to club. But that's what we're trying to do. We've got a goal kicking coach in or a kicking coach in who's working with them. How are you replicating the difference between I don't want to pick out Langi Tuima, but she did the majority of kicking. How do you replicate the fact that when she's playing at her club, she is not playing in front of 10,000 people and live on terrestrial television, so that when that moment happens, whoever it is kicking is prepared? It's a difficult one because it's a closed skill. A lot of it just comes down to repetition, repetition, and then supporting them in that. There's lots of things banded around about how you can set environments up, so... You've got noise replication, stuff like that. It's a lot easier said than done, believe me. What we have done in the past is we've finished sessions and we've had like consequences in for teams. And one of the consequences has been to put the goal kicker from each team in front of the sticks, say 34 metres back, get every player around watching. And, like, and whilst it's a laugh and it does help <laughs> and it does replicate pressure at times, some players really like it. But I remember one player turning around to me and going, if that's supposed to be fun, it's not. But ultimately, do you think that is part of the problem? Because a lot of these women who do your goal kicking, they have far higher stats when they're at club than compared when they come into this environment. Is it just pressure? It could very well be. And it is something we talk about. And it is something we're looking at, particularly in the light of the fact that we know Skaz is not going to be available for a while. We know Zoe's not going to be available for a while. But they were fairly late. We expected Skaz to potentially, we expected Zoe to be in. So we probably didn't, invest in that area as much as we could have done and with Isaac which is a great thing you know we would have done but what you've got to do is deal with the here and now and that's what we're doing and I mean don't get me wrong we still got some high quality goal kickers well, goal kicking is a confidence thing we got Laggy practicing really hard this week we got Holly practicing really hard we got Emma Singh who's probably the best kicker we've got at the moment you know she's not one over from the halfway line when we were training is she related to Elliot Daly? Oh, she looks like it. she's yeah. got such a kick and she's been kicking really consistently well and if she comes on tomorrow there's a good chance that she'll step up but if Ollie's in the group for instance Ollie may stay with it your new cap who's starting Delaney Burns tell us a little bit about her because I'm sure she may possibly be from the Abbey Ward Bristol Bears school of lineouts. yeah it looks that way doesn't it I was at home a couple of weeks ago the week before the six stations started and news started coming through of the injuries we were sustaining and for a second row that was already under pressure and Deeks put on the group that we've got look I'm gonna call Delaney Burns up he said I think she fits the bill he knew about her ability to call the line outs he knew about how she's playing for Bristol I think she's very much from the Abbey Ward school and so we called her in and she's been outstanding for us she stepped in she led the line out really well when she's been asked to do in training she's a physical presence around the field good skill set very good temperament and looks the part so it's one of those opportunities great opportunities for her great opportunities for us to look at her as 2025 cycle starts and things happen for a reason you've mentioned lewis deacon quite a lot today he's obviously staying on after the six nations how much responsibility have you quietly just pushed over to his in-tray with that knowledge? Quite a lot. I'm stepping back quite a bit. Obviously, because Scotty does the backs and a lot of the attack still, he's a massively energised coach, he's got here. You know, he's still in there doing lots of the work, but I'm really conscious of making sure Deeks has a lot of say in what we do now. I'm really conscious of making sure that if we're going to change something or I've got an idea on something, it goes by him and he's comfortable with it. And just making sure that when the Six Nations is done, he's as well positioned as he can be. Our strategy for this competition didn't change one iota with myself and Scotty deciding to step away. This was a massive tournament that we wanted to win, but it was a huge part of the preparation for 2025. And looking at new players and new combinations was always going to be the case. And we've been able to do that so far in training and we were able to do it last week. Probably got a few more combinations than we expected, but that's a good thing. And just lastly, what are you expecting from Italy? They were trucking along very nicely against France and then sort of the rain came. We've talked about a chink in your armory. Did you spot one in theirs? They're a really energised side. They're a very different side at home than they are away. And they always give France a really hard time, but they gave us a couple of hard times over there. I think there's a physical element with Italy where they'll sustain it for so long. I think what happened last week for us is we experienced a very similar thing against Scotland who I thought were outstanding and physically stayed with it. But in the middle part of the game, we were able to overpower them. 
And I think we'll be able to do that against Italy. That'll certainly be part of the plan. I think what Scotland showed at the end was that they've got a lot of resilience and they're a lot stronger and fitter than they were and they came back really strong at us. I'm not sure whether Italy are quite positioned to do that at this moment in time, but we'll see. But what we want to do is we want to make sure that we keep the foot down, if at all possible, keep 15 players on the field, because that certainly helps. And obviously last week we made all the changes and then Poppy got injured immediately and just try and get in a really 80 minute performance. But they've got threats, they've got plenty of threats around the field. They've got unpredictability about them. And then I looked at our game and if I was their coach, I looked and I'd gone, right, there's a couple of areas here, we can get at England. We've tried to second guess those and fix those up. So we'll see that the chess game begins on Sunday. Certainly does. England women's coach Simon Middleton there speaking to the BBC's Sarah Orchard. Uh, the uh, women's Six Nations in full cry today. Ireland 3, uh, France 53 was the earlier uh, scoreline at half time. It's Scotland 10, Wales 12 in those fixtures today. Of course, England against Italy is a three o'clock uh, kickoff tomorrow afternoon. We're at half time in our cracking European rugby tie for you here on BBC Radio Gloucestershire and Five Live Sports Extra. It's La Rochelle 15, Gloucester Rugby 15 at the break. <laughs> And it's two tries apiece. It goes to Leaping Ludlow. Quickly ball down to Clark. Clark with the offload to Atkinson. And through the gap goes Chris Harris. A wonderful drive for Gloucester. Training ground move. Brilliantly executed. La Rochelle three. Gloucester five. What a score for the Jerry Whites. Tackle made. Five metres out. Still advantage. Sunny as a space. And Gloucester just shut the door tightly. and needed to. There's more space now. Boucherie is over. He dies over. American soccer style. Bodies are on the ground. He leapt over the top. Home crowd enjoyed that moment. La Rochelle narrowed the gap. La Rochelle 8, Gloucester 10. 22 minutes played in this first half. Nice new cycle to Dulan. Dulan with offload to Toma. A chip forward. Tries to place it behind Reese Savick. Pobbles into 12 three sides. No, it doesn't. Tell him. Has it? And Toma shoulders off the attention of 12 threes and runs what is a quite a soft finish in for a fairly easy touchdown. That was a little bit sloppy for Gloucester on the far side. They gave La Rochelle a chance and Toma pounced and took it easily. La Rochelle. Well, they get their noses in front now. 15 10 that lead after Thomas try. And Gloucester will look back on that moment to think they could have done better. Atkinson, another wide ball out. Clark on the wing. Clark for the line. Clark for Gloucester. Did he get it down? The referee says he did. A fine finish. Intelligent play from Gloucester. Will it be reviewed? That should be 15 apiece. The referee's looking up. But what vision from Gloucester. Atkinson, magnificent twice in that move. And Clark gets the plaudits. He's levelled it up for Gloucester. The conversion to come. And we've got six minutes remaining in the half. Our late Santi Carreras trying that first half as well, chalked off in review. So Gloucester could have been ahead at the break. As it is, it's La Rochelle 15, Gloucester 15. Let's return back to the second half of our last 16 European Champions Cup clash between La Rochelle and Gloucester Rugby with your commentary team of Richard Martin and first Andrew Pugh. Yes, let's hope we get a second half to match that first 14 minutes. As La Rochelle come back out onto the pitch, here come Gloucester, led out by skipper Lewis Ludlow. We'll just check the you know, Ford Robinson's there. So go to Sev, he's seen the last of the action here for the Cherry Whites in their away pink European strip. Flourished on the usual predominantly yellow colours. We'll just glance around and see how the changes have been made. The replacement loose hair for the home side is on Wardy. So no more time for Sklavi. And Gloucester with those two enforced changes. Stephen Barney off, so Charlie Chapman on towards the tail end of that first half. And then, of course, the uh, replacement elsewhere too. So two changes made by Gloucester, Paul Robinson on and Chapman on, and one for the home side. Charlie's waits to get the second half underway. What can we expect? And Gloucester continue in similar fashion. They're playing into the breeze. It's dropped to Tad, I think, Richard, but it still will be in the home side's favour, I fancy. Yes, I think this early part of this will be all about territory. Here goes 12 trees with the restarting kick. It's a high kick, it's a hanging kick. The chase is led by Reese Samit. It's a good chase and he wraps up Old Reed. He came behind him and caught him unawares and the home side will play the game inside their 22 on the far side. Just to remind you, we're on the La Rochelle 22. That's our commentary position here for the radio. They are going to move it next season, we understand, to a bigger desk as well, which will be welcome as Kerbala punches the kick into touch on Gloucester's 10-meter line, but I think the touch judge will stop on halfway, he does that more yeah. or less. 
quite convenient, yes. I think this uh, early part of the second half will be all about territory. La Rochelle will be wanting to play deep into Gloucester territory, and Gloucester will be f working out how can they get down the pitch now we're playing against the wind. Blake to throw to the front. And Lewis Ludder with good ball into 12 trees and looked a forward offload to Chris Harris. And that was uh, there was uncertainty then, confusion between 12 trees and Harris. He just overran it. And it was rather obvious a forward pass. That's soft from Gloss. It's given the home side an opportunity to construct something from Gloucester's 10 metre line, middle of the pitch. Yes, that was instead of being slick like it was in the first half, that was a bit tentative, uncertain, and there the mistake is made. And this is big pressure right early in the second half because La Rochelle will be confident with their scrum. Gloucester will be encouraged with some of the scrums towards the end of the second half. So it'll be very interesting this first scrum. Yeah. of second half. So the local supporters sporting marine headgear, I think you can call it. It's a rather old-fashioned sailor's hat. So they take their seats in front of us. Kerbar looks up. It's a huge blindside behind him. Just two players occupying that. Here it goes. That scrummage drive is effective. Lost to creaking. They conceded the penalty. Audrey will take it to that blind side. Evades the tackle. The one tackle of Ackerman who slips. Then it there too. And then a little grubber kick through from Doolan. It's bobbling around. He tries to get hands on it again by thinking, well, I knocked it on. And back we will go to where that penalty was first confirmed by Mike Atkinson. That was a shame because Gloucester had done pretty well towards the end of the first half. They stabilised things in the scrimmage, Richard, but straight away the squeeze was applied and Gloucester creaked. Yeah, I think the La Rochelle pack were probably just a bit more sensible there. In the first half they went a bit early or they tried to do something. That one they just remained very solid and gradually eased the you know, Ooh. built the pressure. Well, it's a power play, as they call it in some sports. They've gone for the <laughs> corner. Onto our history. We might be disappointed with that. The touch, as you're saying, that went to touch five metres inside Gloucester's 22. From a, a travelling supporter's perspective, that could have been far worse. Indeed. Uh, but I think we know what's coming now. The catch and drive, I fancy. From that big, bulky home pack. Ujari to throw. Where would he go? Taken by Aldred. He goes up. Next clean ball. Here comes the drive. And the home crowd like it. Lost to concede five metres and still there on the back foot defensively. They've stabilised it now, but another drive from La Rochelle. It's gone to Grant. It's a penalty advantage. They're driving up the middle. They're close to the line. They think it might be a try. They're a metre out, close to touch two. Piling bodies in the pick and drive towards the line. Clement on the ground for Gloucester, trying to get underneath the ball carrier. Now it's been halted. Kerbano is going to get slower ball, but the pack will be entrusted. As they try and find a gap in Gloucester's defence. Frantic work from Skipper Ludo trying to come up the middle. Audrey takes him out. Then it'll come off. And the drive for the line from Botti has just halted on the line. Virtually a second opportunity. And Clement getting underneath the ball carries. Larishel claiming a try. Clement's underneath the man with the ball. And the referee's going to take us back to the earlier advantage. Great work defensively from Gloucester, but they're certainly being tested here, Richard Martin. Yeah, big pressure, Andrew, and in the end, it all came from a very silly mistake by Gloucester backs, which resulted in a scrum, a penalty, and a couple of other penalties. And it's very hard to resist, you know, you can only do so much, I think. It's a yellow card, and I think Lewis Ludlow, Gloucester skipper, has been sent to the bin. Maybe there'd been a team warning given. But he's paid the price and lost about their talismanic leader for the next 10 minutes. Yes, all the good work of the first half can disappear very quickly now in these circumstances. Gloucester absolutely back against the wall, really have to fight, but try to avoid conceding penalties and making life even more difficult. Well, he's looking up the large screen to our left hand side. He brought it down, I think, as the referee's call. He certainly got in there. He's looking at the screen again. Meanwhile, They've seen it's a touch, and up goes Audrey with a big leap, and here comes that forward drive again. Five metres on the line, they swing it around the blind side. It's relentless pressure. Gloucester doing exceedingly well so far. Another advantage, says the referee. Is there a penalty advantage? I think it might be. Now I shall have possession. Three metres of the Gloucester line. Kerr Barlow, this time to Delenn. Appended by Ackerman. To the near side, here goes Antonio. Virtually on the line, just halted by Gloucester. Another effort from the forwards. They're claiming the try. The referee agrees. It was relentless pressure. He's going to get out and getting the slaps on the back. We'll confirm that shortly. What really matters it's La Rochelle 20, Gloucester 15, five minutes played in the second half. And it's Kerbarn of the scrum half. It was the man to emerge from the parlour bodies. He's got the touchdown. Home side lead by five points here on BBC Radio Gloucestershire. 
five bits paid in the second half and of course with five life sports extra Kerr Barlow was one of the few shining lights for La Rochelle in the first half probably appropriate that he gets the score but you can almost hear the words of Ronan O'Gara with possibly an expletive or two in the dressing room saying we are so much stronger than them get deep into their territory there's no way they'll stop us scoring and that's what's happened in this first five minutes it's going to be really tough now for Gloucester to restart and try and remain well away from their goal line just for the period with the yellow card and what a noise in the home crowd it's a wall of noise now isn't it they stop. Immediately the signs say, please respect the kicker. Feel a respect Taylor Boutoir. And Astoy nails the extra two points. And suddenly that size with Boston becomes greater, doesn't it? Down to 14 men. 22-15. Now a shot lead. Gloucester's options in terms of replacements is a little bit limited already, Richard, because they've had to bring on two yes, changes. I mean, and, you know, from the kickoff, they've got to really do everything they can to gain possession and then keep possession, because that's their best hope in the short term and the longer term of this second half. As we lose the sun for a moment, it's a short restart. Kick is hanging in this very strong breeze, patted backwards, and suddenly by Blake. Four Robinson goes down on it, but he's been beaten to it by who else? Old Reed. Dies on the ball. Kerr Barlow to Antonio. His offload is Skelton. Beats the tackle of 12 trees. Those long Aussie legs pumping onto halfway. To Hastoy again. His kick is charged down. Here's Chapman. Chapman needs to play soccer. Picks it up. Nailed on the back foot. Can he protect Gloucester's ball? He can. Inside the 22 just beneath us. Gloucester have balls. Blake plays scrum half to Ackerman. Back to 12 trees on the 22. To Carreras. Carreras looks up. Looks for forwards. Surveys a couple of tackles. Goes backwards though. Finds 12 trees then to Ackerman. But Ackerman will go what else? Straight, powerful drive over the 22, near side, 15 metres in for touch. Chapman's protesting, he wants the ball. He says Lower Show would not let Gloucester play it. Gloucester being penalised for not releasing. Ackerman can't quite believe it. And it's replacement Pop Roddy who is all over him on the ground. And the debate continues, but Mike Adams says no, <laughs> you were the offender. Right in front of us, that you wonder if Chapman might have been better off just giving it a kick towards the goal line because he had to slow down to pick it up and was caught immediately. Gloucester tried to regroup and reorganise but didn't get the opportunity to take the attack further. But that sort of illustrates the game up to now, Andrew. Oh, Dillon hasn't found touch. Thought he plays better soccer, picks the ball up, he's on halfway. Half a break, tackled by Dulan. He just encroaches into home territory on this near side. Slow ball this time. Ironic cheers to the Gloucester supporters. Mike Anderson has given them a penalty. It's important for Gloucester now they really take advantage because this has been a big opportunity. They've just missed one. Now they've got a chance to kick deep into the La Rochelle territory. And what must be encouraging for them is that La Rochelle made a silly mistake to give them this opportunity down at this end of the pitch. Michael Vivas is absolutely pumped out there. He's really stewed up the Argentinian has a bit of concern about how fit he is he's been out for so long after breaking his arm as he joined Gloucester but he's out there good shift so far big moment in the game good kick from 12 trees Gloucester have the line up from the penalty 10 meters from the home line near side Blake uses a towel to dry the ball It'll be a full Gloucester line out without their skipper of course that clock will be counting down on his sin bidding can they construct something for this? It'll be a delight for the home Gloucester supporters. Up it goes to Alamano. Quickly pops it down. Blake on the run round. Blake in turn to Thorley. Half a break from him, but that was well read from the home side. He's tackled six metres out. Chapman burrowing in. Sends it out to the aforementioned Argentinian. Held three metres out. Where's the ball? Chapman has it. Advantage to Gloucester, says the referee. Desperately working hard are they to get the clear out. They have possession. They might as well give it a go. They have a penalty brewing. But uh, they've just been halted under the crossbar. It will go out to 12 trees now. A cross field chip. There's space that way for Reece Samad. He's got the ball. He dots the ball down. Excellent vision for Billy 12 trees. Reece Samad had acres of space. And the ball floated into his arms. What a vital score for Gloucester. 22-20. Nine second half minutes played. 14 man Gloucester edged closer to their house. Brilliant. Brilliant try for Gloucester. In the context of this game, possibly the best try the match so far for them and La Rochelle players just wandering around looking at each other saying what's going on because they thought they would got it absolutely right at the start of this second half and they've conceded a try Gloucester will be hugely encouraged by that not least because they had to have several goals at it and they kept the ball they kept looking for it and really cool head from Billy 12 trees to kick to the corner and Reece Samit was already hot
horizontal diving in to catch it. Goodness me, this game continues to the right, Richard. What a match it is. That's a challenging conversion for 12 trees. He's just five metres in from the far touchdown. He's just outside the 22, but this breeze is a real factor. If he could nail this one, the roof would come off in terms of the Gloucester supporters are cheering. It's a very challenging kick. Wrong side of the pitch for a right-footed kicker. Here he comes. Two steps and a strike. Again, he's gone for accuracy. He's, he's jogging around. He likes it, but it's just evaded the target. He turns out that must have been very, very close. Very difficult kick. Very difficult kick. Good attempt from Billy Twelve Trees. Important now, Gloucester group will get ready. They're facing the sun as this ball comes down into their 22. Yeah, a story with the restart. Ackerman waiting. Takes it inside Gloucester's 22, as Richard's indicated. Went straight into a big tackle. Holtz is drive. That tackle made by Laval. The lock. But Gloucester have organised themselves. Chapman, without much of a guard, his kick's being charged down. You need to get some more cover there, taken by Kerbalo for the home side. Outside Gloucester's 22. To Aldreed. To Hastoy. In turn to Dandy. A wide ball out. Taken off the boot of winger Fulver and then rather harmlessly into touch on the far side. But it was forward the initial ball. Again, that's very sloppy. You know, you've got Jason Dandy in midfield. He doesn't look international at the moment, does he? I'm a bit worried he's going to suddenly look like one mind. <laughs> Don't say that, Andrew. He might look up and say, right, I'm going to show you the next 20 minutes. But a scrum now on the 10 metre line. I'm not sure if Gloucester have had a put into the scrum in this game so far. They want quick ball, I think. Right. Because they, they do need very, very quick ball. Yes. yes. And of course, are they going to put a back in there to uh, protect their possession without Lewis Ludlow, their skipper, on the pitch? Meanwhile, Ollie Thor is getting some treatment on the near side, but it doesn't look anything too significant. If they put a back on there, I'm just looking, I can't see. No, they haven't. Tartes is talking to his back division. So they're backing themselves with a quick hail here and the ball quickly away, I think. Yes. A risk, but a risk they've got to take. Yeah. Waiting is Charlie Chapman. No blind side occupant because uh, at least that's behind it. Taken off the back. And he's done really well by Jack Clement under real pressure, real pressure. Chapman to 12 trees in turn to Harris. Harris, a wide pass out to Thorny. Thorny taking the tackle. Offload back to Querris on halfway. Lovely step from Querris. Nice line. Holt as he approaches the home 10 meter line from Chapman to 12 trees. Then to Ackerman. Is uh, Atkinson again in action with the offloads. So Querris has taken a bash. He's hobbling on this near side in some discomfort. 12 trees in turn to re Salmon. A chip forward. Rather innocently bobbles into touch. Did it come off a home player? I'm just wondering, concern for Carreras on this near side is now we shall make a change. Bringing on number 18. That's Georges Rezel, the tight heads. They've changed both props for Antonio. You don't see him doing 80 in many games, do you, Antonio? No. I, I share your anxiety about Carreras. He looks very uncomfortable. And would be a, a huge loss if he had to really leave the field. Yeah, huge applause for the slight bigger Antonio as he leaves the pitch. He took a bash in the first half, and also there's Bottier getting some treatment out there. Well, I think one of the aspects of the game that would be pleasing for Gloucester in the first half, and again now since they've recovered themselves in this second half, they're in the face of the La Rochelle players all the time, and that's forcing some errors that you wouldn't expect. No. Gloucester then need to take advantage of those errors. Ludlow waiting to come back on, not much time left on his sin binning. With 13 minutes played in the second half here on BBC Radio Gloucester, five live sports extra with us too, it's 22-20 in La Rochelle's favour, and the uh, current European champions just creaking from time to time in this game and, and that's sort of the nature of competition isn't it you know they're such a good side they're such a strong side but this is the first knockout mm. and everything about Gloucester going into this would be how on earth can we beat La Rochelle and everything from La Rochelle would be there's no way we could lose this game but it's in the balance yeah. and uh, an opportunity now for Gloucester not far into the La Rochelle half but really important they make ground and take the opportunity it was the attempt to tackle a bot here on Gloucester's Maiko Vivas, the loose head that caused the damage. But uh, the multi capped international from Fiji is back on his feet. 
And it's going to be a Gloucester line out, Blake to throw just inside the La Rochelle Temmies line, far side to Alamana, then to Chapman, his 12 trees, Charles is, is to Harris, who cuts a diagonal line back towards the forwards. Advantage play to Gloucester, says the referee, might as well give it a go, Ackerman driving low. Alamana in close support. Chapman's frustrated again, gets slow ball. Gravis brings us back to where the penalty was conceded. Gregory Ardreed, his English is very good, of course, because he's brought up partially in the UK. Irish mother back goes Lewis Ludlow, Gloucester restored. And how unusual is that in a game like this? A man's in the bin and Gloucester crossed out the try they conceded. I think Ludlow conceded the yellow card deliberately. He was such an aggressive, energetic, in your face player against La Rochelle all through the first half. He probably needed 10 minutes and he's come back on at just the right time. Because if 12 trees can put this very close to the goal line, oh no, he's kicking for goal. He's gone for the sticks. Of course, the winner of this game will play either Saracens or Ospreys. Their, their count is tomorrow afternoon at 3 o'clock. And my money's on Saracens, I have to say. Sorry to say that, Richard, to a man from Swansea. <laughs> but it is being played in North London. It's 12 trees then. 38 minutes, metres out. Virtually head on to the post. The wind has been a challenge for both kickers in this game. Tall figure. Looks up at those posts again, the wind freshens a tad. We've got blue sky around us. Comes forward, those two stuttering steps and a strike. He's chipped it, he's concerned about it. He's nailed it. It's Larishel 22, Glosser 23, a fine penalty for Billy Twelvedries. Just the right time to get a kick, Andrew. Excellent kick. Gloucester defending with the sun shining in their eyes again in that bottom right hand corner. Really important to catch this ball. Zarish will make a change out wide. Here's the ball into the arms of Ruin Ackerman again. And a body has come off in the back rows. Gloucester try and work it through their pack towards that line. So Skipper Ludlow straight back into the action. On for Botti as Johan Tanga, cap once by France. Chapman, that pressure guard again to kick from inside his 22. It's hanging in the breeze. He will find the sanctuary of the touchline, but not a long kick. I think at times Charlie Chapman needs to marshal his balls a bit more and get some more protection in those situations. Yes. You know, like a lot of scrum halves, he's, he's short, isn't he? Yeah, and that was a very good kick in the circumstances. And Gloucester now about to undergo intense pressure. Although at the moment, the Gloucester players individually and collectively look a bit more energetic and interested than the La Rochelle players do. Yeah. Absolutely. Bougerie to throw. Who's he going to? Goes to the front. Quick ball down. A lot of dummy running his hair. Bougerie gets the offload back to support from Dante. For once makes a few metres. And Kerbalo to Laval. Kerbalo again to Skelton. Runs into Ruin Ackerman and Billy Twelch. He's furious defence from those two. And his Tango straight into action with the ball in hand. Again Twelch. He's like a dervish out there fighting for it, isn't he? Goodness me, gives us all. Audrey this time runs straight into two Gloucester tacklers, one of whom is Seb Blake, rolls away. Still recycled by the home side, popped out wide, danger. As the ball's kicked forward into the Gloucester 22 by Fulby, he needs a kind back as he gets it, he taps the ball down to the corner. Brilliant out wide, absolutely brilliant finish by the winger. He backed himself, he chipped it forward, and he dotted the ball down in the corner. La Rochelle 27, Gloucester 23, 17 second half minutes played. The Gloucester cover couldn't quite get there. And goodness me, that was a fine finish for the left winger, putting it behind the retreating V Summit and Carreras. And they're just checking He's the ball down the ball now. He's in touch, is it? He's clearly in touch. And that is a decision, Richard. You were right. It didn't take long. It's cost to it to bring on Ben Morgan. Have they made the decision or are they still... Well, studying? the referee's down to our right-hand side, looking at the camera down there. Touch judge, rather. And the referee's on the far side, looking at the other screen. He agrees. Try disallowed. That's one try each disallowed. And the winger thought it was, it was that upper leg knee area, wasn't it? Yes, and again, it was a brilliant effort from the winger. Ben Morgan on for Gloucester, retiring at the end of the season. He had a big impact in the game he played here last time. Who's coming off for Gloucester? We'll find out shortly. Do we know? 
He's trying to spot who's leaving the scene out there. We'll confirm that shortly. And he's going into join a Gloucester line out. It's Jack Clement, I think. Teaser, I'll get that confirmed. Anyway, we'll focus on the line out on the far side. So Gloucester line out, five metres out of defensive line out. Need to be clean here. Late to throw. Floodlights on beside him. To Clark, quickly down to Chapman. The offload is to Ackerman. Gloucester working laterally in field, but uh, perilously close to their own line. Five metres out. Now Chapman has got a bit of an extended guard this time, but Skelton's there and he's a big figure. And again, that breeze is holding that kick up in the air. Chapman keeps those lower, and Reece Summit's done really well to collect the ball out wide under real pressure. And he's been penalised for not releasing, I think. And the home crowd enjoyed that moment. Yes, he caught it very well, Andrew, but dropped and faced the wrong way, and he was easy meet then for the La Rochelle players coming in. And it sort of it illustrates the difficulty of playing against the strong wind when you're deep in your own territory. They did everything right, but they just couldn't get away from that. Now comes the big line out, five metres from the line. I think Chapman needs to keep those kicks lower as well, doesn't he, really? I know that... Uh... It's a common tactic employed by Gloucester, but it's such a breeze in his face. He needs to draw that ball a bit lower, especially if he's looking for touch. Big moment. Arishol 22, Gloucester 23, but they've got a line out, and it's five metres of the Gloucester line. They're piling bodies in. So far, resistance is good. They swing it around the blind side, splintering off. At the heart, it's a front row union. Can they get the ball down? I think Gloucester hold them up there. They have held them up. It was a prop Rezal who thought he was over, but Gloucester had two, three bodies there. Gregory Aldred is appealing to the referee, but I think Gloucester did very well to close the gap there and get underneath the ball carrier, Richard. Gloucester have done some very good things in that match, in this match so far, but that was probably one of the best of them to stop them scoring there. Just watching the replay, Four Robinson was there, then sprinting off. Chapman was there defensively, Ackerman there too, Ben Morgan as well. Well, Ackerman has been immense in this game, but particularly in this first part of the second half, absolutely huge, and 12 trees also in a defensive set. 12 trees with a low restart kick, good idea. Almost trapped, soccer star. Here's Aldrin, the ball on Gloucester's 10 meters by driving into the arms of Ben Morgan, halts him and throws him backwards. It's a good moment, but uh, has stood to this, this his offload is terrible. Gives Thorley a chance to run up, pressurise the... And then, unfortunately, he doesn't then get it back to his feet. And that's a bit dull for Molly Thorley, I'm afraid. Harris was there too, but Thorley didn't allow the Lara Chopin to get back to his feet to play the ball. And that's a penalty offence. It is, and that's the downside of being so aggressive and energetic in the face of the opposition. You get too over-enthusiastic and then that sort of thing happens. So, another big line-out to defend on the 22 this time. And we're moving into the final quarter of this game here on BBC Radio Gloucestershire 5 by Sports Sector 2. 22-23 in Gloucester's favour. Can the Cherry and Whites in their pink shirts and socks hold out here? for another astonishing result. Last time it's back in 2017, of course. 14-16, Gloucester won. Gloucester don't compete at the line-out. And they're just trying to marshal their defence through their pack. They've got a bit of a choke tackle going on here, which Rono Garo know all about, but then it does come out to Hastoy, then to Dante, runs straight into 12 trees. Atkinson there too. He's done so well, young Atkinson, to hold up that effort from Dante. Slow, slow ball. Looking right to Lavo, the lock held by Vivas for Gloucester. He's enjoyed his first real start in Gloucester colours. Then to the front row, upended his prop, Vardy. Slow ball for Kerbalo. The other replacement prop. No third hands to Hastoy to rule. And the bouncing ball's taken by Arnie Thorley. He's snapped the opportunity and has got Gloucester possession back on halfway. Now to Morgan, Morgan to Harris. Harris looks up, has space, has time. Cuts a nice line over halfway into home territory. Chapman is there. 12 trees, were they offside the La Rochelle back line? I wonder, Atkinson to Carreras. Carreras to Ackerman on halfway. Ackerman has support on the inside. Back it goes to Carreras, but he's enveloped by defending players, but he will protect Gloucester's possession. To Alan Mano on his shoulders, fellow Argentinian Vivas. Takes play forward onto the home 10 metre line. 12 trees, Harris 
Here's Reese Samet with a step, evades one tackle, evades another tackle, burst acceleration and a grow into the 22. Reese Samet, it's a foot race, cover is there and he can't wait back, back to his feet and the ball is protected by the retreating Fulver and Gloucester are penalised again. It's moments like that, they just need a bit more composure because although it would have been home ball, they've now given the chance to clear the danger by a penalty being conceded. Yeah, and as we said after a few minutes ago, Andrew, when you're playing this aggressive, get in their face, it's so easy to just overdo it. And uh, that time, I think the referee signalled it was the second man in, so he couldn't go in with his hands because the rock had formed. But it's really rattling the La Rochelle players at all levels. You know, the bit, they're big players, they're big ball carriers, haven't really had the chance to batter their way through. And Gloucester, there's a real confident look about the Gloucester team, the Gloucester players. Well, here we go, they're making two changes. It's interesting, they're going to bring on Henry Walker and they're going to bring on Henry Harry Arrington to the front row. So they've changed all three of their front row forwards now. Right call. Cool. I mean, I, I think the Argentinian prop, there was a question whether he'd just be able to survive. He's done very well, having been without rugby for so long. So maybe the time is right to bring on Arrington. Another 19 stone loose head. Gosh, of course, without Barbara Pava Ruskin. At the moment, Lamashell making a change too. But it's a home line out on their 10 B line on the far side. Off has come back row forward. Delan. Who's ready to throw? Lost to compete at the back. Taken cleanly by Aldred. Very cleanly. Ackerman in with the tackle as the driving wall is formed and they're working their way towards halfway. Curbalo to kick. There's space in the backfield but Reece Summit is there so he needs to take responsibility. It's a swirling breeze taken well by Reece Summit. He's on a lateral run trying to bring Thorley in. He's out of the 22. He's over the 10 metre line. Will he chip? He will chip behind the retreating players into the 22. Cover is there and they play soccer into the goal area. Can Gloucester get there? It's going to go dead and Reece Summit rolls on the ground. Hugely disappointed. He did wonderfully well and just that final touch wasn't to be. That, that really illustrates the class of Re Lewis Reese Summit. They were, he was way deep in the Gloucester 22 and he sort of jogged across the field, lining up the players, top class players before him, and then said, Do you want to see somebody run? Watch this. And he just cruised past them. Just a shame at the end that the kick didn't go a little bit gentler. Less Thorley was there in support. Should it go on to Thorley? That's the other question in my mind. Deep restart by Larishel into the arms of Carreras. He'll put up in the air to test that breeze. It's hanging, it's going back towards Gloucester half. Taken well by Ben Morgan over his shoulder and Morgan will scramble his way onto the home 10 metre line, middle of the pitch. 12 trees to Elrington. Elrington with a step and a short carry. Chapman's there again to Ben Morgan again. It's a link man to 12 trees. Another wide ball out to Reese Samis. He has to reach for that and it was forward. It could have been intercepted. And <laughs> you're playing high risk rugby out there, aren't you? It's on the it's on the edge all the time, Andrew, but it's got to be. And the Gloucester players have got enough confidence about them to try that. And at the moment, they as a team look as though they know what they're doing. La Rochelle as a team look as though they're not sure what they're doing. And if they do become sure of what they're doing, they could still steamroll a Gloucester. A scrum. First one with uh, a different front row, so we'll see how that goes. He's taking a bit of a bash for but he's okay. The replacement for back row forward, Dylan, was uh, Paul Boudinot. And uh, French under 20 international. To remind you, both sides were 6 2 split replacements. But we know that if Botti had been on the pitch, he might have been a back replacement. He's gone. He's gone. Home scrum. Ben Morgan's weeks for Gloucester, middle of the pitch on the halfway line. And be interesting, Andrew, whether the La Rochelle go for the, to win the scrum or win the penalty. Just 15 minutes remaining, Gloucester with a one point lead. I'm sure they went early into that scrum. It's come out to the back very untidily, picked up by Kerr Bar Barlow to Hastoy. <laughs> Through the hands, here is Dante trying to do some damage. And Atkinson again didn't shirt the tackle, he didn't get over that halfway line. This time to Will Skelton, held by the tackle of Elrington and then the ball will be kicked by Bryce Dumas into the Gloucester 22 rather harmlessly now Reece Samet knowing that the breeze is in his face will try and drill it down that 5 metre channel far side he finds the home 10 metre line the pass to Hastoy then to Aldred laterally Aldred on halfway again tackled brilliantly by Atkinson went hard and low applauded by the Gloucester supporters what a game he's had youngster Atkinson 
Kerbalo to Skelton, back to Hastoy, and here's Dulanda, space out wide, and numbers out wide, he goes straight, should he pass it, here is Dante, Dante on the 22, a wide ball out, it's terrible, it's a terrible pass, way in front of left winger, Jules Favre, and the Gloucester supporters give the old Eeyore cry, because that was a poor pass for an international centre of such repute. Dreadful, because I said a few minutes ago, La Rochelle as a team don't look as though they know what they were doing. Just then they looked as though they knew exactly what they were doing, and it was all unfolded, a try was on, and then not just an individual error, a dreadful individual error that brought it to an end. Resulted in the Gloucester line out, and they're going to take the scrum. What's going on now then? The referee has confirmed the line out. It's a big moment for Henry Walker. A big moment because Blake has been impressive. Can he find his jumpers? On the 22. Far side of this pitch. Up it goes. He finds Clark. Powers it down to Chapman. And here's Ackerman. Ackerman with an exaggerated dummy. He's been choke tackle. Needs to get a knee to ground. He's succeeded on the 22. And it will be played, says the referee. Chapman has the extended leg guard in front of him. With just 14 minutes remaining in this game. Gloucester with a one-point lead, 22-23. The high kick is a better kick taken by Dulan, just his own half. Sets him a lateral run. Gloucester have numbers there. Tackle made by Reese Samet with support out wide. Kerbalo infield to Bougerie, running hard from deep. Just encroaches into Gloucester territory. Kerbalo, a story, flat pass to Aldreed. 12 trees is there. Another tackle by Atkinson. How many has he made? Astoy under real pressure gets the offload to Bougeray, side down by Ben Morgan. There's another Gloucester player take, taking a bash. It's Ackerman. He's getting some treatment. There's an arm wrestle for the ball and halfway, far side of the pitch. Must appealing for some reason. What's Thorny shouting about out there? Teddy Tomar wants a cross field kick. Thorny needs to be sharp here defensively. It will come out though to the front row. They're going to give it a rumble. Treatment continues. The Gloucester player down. It's a penalty conceded by Gloucester. What's that all about, Richard Martin? Offside. Offside. And that's the decision. The referee certainly his gesture is such then. And Gloucester about to bring on Cam Jordan into the second row. It looks as though Ackerman's uh, leg was injured, being removed from a ruck. Uh, nice. But hopefully it's not a twisted knee, but I feel oh, that's... Oh, some discomfort might... on the yeah. ground. They flinched yeah. as the medical staff gave him some attention. And I think he's looking at the screen for some reason. There we go, what's that all about? He's going to replay on the last screen to on his side. I come in over the ball on the back. Oh, yeah. and, and then he's been twisted in a very uncomfortable way out of the rough. He's back on his feet. He's not probably looking to see if the removal was via a neck roll. Last I want to bring on Cam Jordan and young Freddie Thomas. Marichal bringing on Roman Sazi, who was one of the few players who played in the Gloucester fixture here six years ago. Ackerman's coming off. So Thomas is a natural back row forward. And he's put in a strong performance, hasn't he, Roman Ackerman? There they come. Thomas and also. Cam Jordan, who's coming off at Lockford Gloucester. One of those players will have to leave the pitch. Yes, that uh, might be the end of Ackerman's season, I would yeah, suggest. It doesn't look too good, does it? No, moment. no. He's put some hours in, hasn't he? He really has. Yeah. He's the clear out by Prop Rezal, who did the damage. He's limping off. But he's just the sort of player that Gloucester supporters like, isn't he? The referee has a yellow card in his ah. For the deck roll. Now, that's a moment, isn't it? A yellow card, questioned by Gregory Aldreed. And he's being sent to the bin, the replacement prop. Well, that's a moment in the game, isn't it? That really is. Freddie Clark's the man being replaced by Cam, Cam Jordan. The game rolls on, continuing to produce interesting, exciting, and at times controversial events, Andrew. He's got never seen this game, hasn't it? Raise our yellow card. And there's just 12 minutes remaining. Gloucester gone deep from the boot of 12. That is a fine kick, deep into the 22. Gloucester uh, 
to do with the rolling malt here. They haven't used it much today, but they could do with doing it for perhaps 15 meters, but perhaps four or five would do. This is a big opportunity, particularly at this stage of the match. Gloucester Sport is in good voice. Do get in touch by text, tweet or WhatsApp message. We'd love to hear from you. Can Gloucester see this game out? They go short to the front to Lewis Ludlow on the run round as Walker finds Harris. Harris bashes up the middle. Good carry, 10 metres out of Gloucester. And then to Ben Morgan. His big frame is enveloped by defenders, one of whom is Dante. Mm. All over the board, La Rochelle. And Gloucester need to protect their own position. They do very well. From Alamana back to Jordan, driving low and hard towards that La Rochelle line. Chapman to Walker again. Evades the attempted tackle of Tom uh, of Don, uh, Rule to rush up. And then La Rochelle concede. Hands in front of the ball on the ground. Mike Anderson quite decisive. And the bid is Scotsman says that's a Gloucester penalty. And what did Gloucester do here, Richard? It's 10 metres out. Do they go for the post? They've got a one point advantage. The win's been a challenge. I think sensible go for the post. But I think in this game and the context, go for the try. Well, they go for the try. This, this is the best opportunity they've had in the second half. They've got time to work out what they're going to do. They've got confidence in the way they're playing. The La Rochelle players are pacing about, looking a bit nervous and a bit agitated. This is the time to go for it. They're going for the post. They've changed their mind. There was a brain stress conference between Chris Harris, Lewis Ludlow and Billy Twelve Trees. And in the end, having thought about the corner, they've gone for the post. As I said, I was only teasing, like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> With ten minutes remaining. This is a huge kick for Billy. It is. I don't think any kick in this direction is easy in this second half because the, the wind is, is uncertain. And it is. He's just got to get his head down and just nail it. The ball is on the tee, 15 metres in, on that 15 metre line from touch. It's four metres inside the 22. For the right foot kick, it's the near side of the pitch, the right side, but the angle is tight and the wind an issue. Really 12 trees. The crowd less quiet now, as you might expect. Well, 45 degrees on that tee. Looks up at the post. Two sort head. Fly half comes forward now. Two steps and now a strike. It looks good. It's a fine penalty for Billy Twelve Trees. It's Gloucester leading here in Lower Shell. 22 26. Nine minutes remaining. Fine penalty. Showed Twelve Trees experience there. He takes a long time with the kick and the crowd was silent. But when they got agitated and started cheering, then he kicked absolutely dead straight. Into the 22, taken by young Thomas, who's just come on under real pressure, does well. Protects Gloucester's born. Now, again, Chapman needs to marshal that guard to protect him under some pressure. There he goes, kicking under real pressure, and he will find such. That's a very good touch finder into the breeze from Charlie Chapman. Midway between Gloucester's 22. They're on the 10 metre line, in fact, the touch has just said. That's a good clearance. Very good. Chapman's been excellent since he's come on as an injury replacement. Gloucester now facing the line, line out on their own 10 metre nine. Ludlow's getting them organised. La Rochelle still have a look about them, but they're not sure what they're doing. This line out will tell us. Gloucester need to be composed here, don't they? Eight minutes remaining. Bougerie to the front. Gloucester do not compete. Secured by the home forwards, going laterally on that 10 metre line. Good resistance from Gloucester. Ford Roberts needs to get back in there. They're creaking a bit now, Gloucester. Wentz is the call. And they're still trusting their pack to work the run to the 22. Kerbalo is there trying to sprint off. There's a gap there. Good tackle by Ford Robinson. Needed to be made. Swept up to the front row. He's on the rumble. It's Prot Wardy. Held outside Gloucester's 22. Another attempt to pick and drive this time from Tanga. Slow ball for Kerbalo this time. Skelton is waiting. Skelton has. Held by Thomas. He's still trying to wriggle out of the tackle. Thomas has still got his leg. Well done, young man. Midfield, just outside Gloucester's 22. La Rochelle with seven and a half minutes remaining. Will they go out wide to Dante? Dante, again, Atkinson goes low and brings him to ground. He's got a three-stone advantage, Dante, but Atkinson held his man. Ferocious defence from Gloucester, driving La Rochelle back. They were at the far side, driving onto that Gloucester 22. Morgan's there for Gloucester, holding them up. To this near side, again to the front row. Gloucester lead players out wide. Fr frantic course from 12 trees. It comes out outside me. Gloucester diving onto it. But they conceded the penalty, says Mike Atkinson. With seven minutes remaining. Goodness me, Richard Martin. What a game. 
No. 22 26 cost to leave. They just conceded a penalty. Yes, and uh, oh, they're going they for the corner. The corner. And it's a good yes. kick. It, I think it happened without any consultation. It was just we're going for the corner. They're going through the throat, and this will be a huge, difficult situation for Gloucester, right on their own goal line. It is literally what six meters out. Six meters out. Home crowd sense an opportunity. We've got six minutes remaining. Good opportunity to jump and steal the ball at this line out. That's what they should do. And they're down to 14 men, of course. In goes the ball, taken athletically by Sazi. Can they get a drive? It's great resistance. Have lost a huge resistance. Led by Skipper Ludlow. Who else? Bougerie has it in the back. Held back by Jordan. Lost to come round. Thomas is there working like a Trojan. Rarishell within three metres of the Gloucester line, same distance in from touch. Up it comes to Skelton, lost to quickly on their man. Then to Audrey. Ford Robinson is there driving it backwards. Tremendous defence from Gloucester. They'll pick and drive round the blind side. Again, Jordan's in with another tackle. How long can Gloucester resist this endless pressure? Is Wardy another advantage as a referee to the home side? Gloucester all over them as they go to ground. It will be played though. And suddenly a gap appearing, they go for the line, they can't quite get there, just held, 12 feet on the ground. They're not going to get over the line, it's not going to come back and Mike Atkinson will take us back to the earlier penalty with five minutes remaining here on BBC Radio Gloucester, five by Sports Extra. It's still La Rochelle 22, Gloucester 26. And birthday boy Johnny Bay on the touchline, can't bear to watch at the moment. Good excitement this, Andrew, it'll be interesting what they decide to do here. I suspect they might go for a tap and go because they've still got some huge forwards who haven't done a lot in this game. And what would it be for them if they could score the winning try in this last two or three minutes? Well, it, we'll have to wait because the Gloucester player down injured getting some treatment. You can't quite see who it is. But the whole of the La Rochelle side grouped together having a little powwow. And La Rochelle bring on replacement hooker Espiagu. My apologies the pronunciation. We said at the beginning, Andrew, it was great to be here, privileged to be here. This is knockout rugby, European rugby, taking the champions absolutely to the limit, absolutely to the wire. What can Gloucester do with this difficult situation? Five minutes remain. Audrey is there. There's something on here. He's got two players either side of him. It's a tap and go, Skelton with his back to the Gloucester players. They need to be careful here about pre engaging, don't they? Or are they just a decoy? It's a, it's a set piece move here. I've never seen anything like this. Look, Skelton picks and goes and drives around the open side. Gloucester are there. Thomas is there. Another pick and drive effort from the back. Held by Gloucester two metres out. They're going to give it another go. They need defensive players on the blind side. Gloucester all over it, the breakdown. Can they strip Larishell the ball? They can't. It will come out to a, a posse of fours. Dante is there, was like a back row forward, but he goes to one of his fellow forwards. Tremendous defence from Ben Morgan driving them back to within five metres of the line. How long can Gloucester resist the pressure? They'll take it around the blind side again. Again, Gloucester are there. Atkinson again involved defensively. Another pick and drive around the other side. Again, they're conceding a metre or so. Again, Thomas is there too, the youngster. Oh, Dries to this near side. To, to forward, Tanga. Five metres out, he's held. Again, the front row won't be trusted with the work. Again, they don't get over that five metres line. Twelve trees with assistance, driving them back. Four minutes remaining on the clock. Again, the four is picking, trying to pick and drive. They're four metres on the line. It's huge pressure on Gloucester. Huge concentration required. Audrey's burrowing in again. He's got it. He's trying to work his way towards the line. He's on the line. Can he get it down? No Gloucester with bodies underneath. Are they going to work the blind side? No, they work. They'll keep it tight to the players on the ground. Skelton there again. Slow, slow ball this time. With the scrum off, fancy a dog. He's going to give it a go. And it's for a replacement, Levesquio, this time the replacement hooker. As uh, Owington uh, led the roads out the way for Gloucester. They may be undernumbered on the blind side there, Gloucester. He's so careful as they power bodies in. Frantic defence. And trying to get to him ball. Morgan's there, his headgear prominent, and they're literally camped on the line, La Rochelle. Another pick and drive as Gloucester try and get underneath it. Disallowed. 12 trees again. Defensively magnificent. 
as they go laterally with three minutes remaining on the clock. Still Gloucester with that four-point lead. Larachelle desperately looking for a try. The Gloucester resists. They've got bodies underneath. The referee's looking. Is he going to award it? No, so very close to the line. That's as close as they've got the last two minutes, Larachelle. Again, they'll do it. Again, Gloucester, Russia. They come out wide this time. Danger for Gloucester. They've got numbers out wide to Dulan. Dulan to Tomwa. It's Tomwa stepping going to get over the line. He gets over the line and Teddy Tomwa scores the try. Harris was in the last minute tackle but Tomwa was already on the line. They sucked Gloucester in defensively. Had the space out wide. And a magnificent defensive effort from Gloucester comes to an end. Teddy Tomwa. The right winger, the try scorer. Larachelle 27, Gloucester 26, and just two minutes remaining here at the Stade, Vincent de France. Great, great support for, for the La Rochelle side, helping to lift them over the line. They battered and battered against the door, but they couldn't break it down. And finally, one of them worked out. Perhaps it would be better if he used a bit of intelligence and moved the ball out wide they did that effectively and the try was quite easy in the end but the Gloucester players be so disappointed to have conceded but they'll also be hugely hearted, heartened by the, the quality of the defence over the last three or four minutes well it's quite magnificent they just threw themselves into it you know it's a cliche isn't it they put their bodies on the line they literally did that then Gloucester Oh, marvellous, marvellous performance from from the defensive work all through the game, but particularly under that sort of pressure at the end. And still Johnny May on his birthday, cannot bear to watch Antoine Astoy to add the extra two points. The clock says a minute's remaining. And the home crowd delighted. But they know they've been in a game here, they really do. A story then, just outside the 22, he's 10 metres in from this near touchline, comes forward now with Thorley in his face, and he's drawn that in, he's out of the extra two, La Rochelle 29, Gloucester 26, and we're into the last minute of the game Richard. Last minute of the game, three points behind, good time to catch the ball and run through and score a try. Twaldries goes very short. Palmed backwards, was it palmed backwards by the pursuing Atkinson? No, it wasn't. It's knocked on. You can see what he's trying to execute there. Didn't quite work out. And the clock says 20 seconds, 15 seconds remaining. And I'm sure the home pack will just stick it up their jumpers now. And reckon a football match, take it to the corner flag, Richard. There we go. They use a forward pod. Skelton is there. They're not trying to go anywhere, really. It's going actually. Gloucester appealing. They're not releasing the ball at the breakdown. Mike Adams has done nothing of it. Time is up on the clock, says the timekeeper. Where is that spherical object? There it is. And kick dead by La Rochelle. Game over. A magnificent display from Gloucester. They push the European champions all the way here. And they almost brought up an astonishing result, Richard Martin. Fantastic display by the Cherry Whites. Nobody gave them a chance, but they got so very close. Sitting here as a complete neutral, Andrew, I can say that was the most amazing, exciting, interesting, fascinating rugby match. La Rochelle will take that to the final. That will be the game that they say, we win the European Cup this year because we beat Gloucester in La Rochelle in the round of 16. They struggled so hard at times they just couldn't get it together and Gloucester took everything they could they get so much out of this game the defensive work the aggressive in the face of the La Rochelle players huge huge game for Gloucester they'll be shattered to have lost that even though they've lost to one of the best if not the best team in Europe an amazing rugby match the end yeah it was everything you could want from a European game by the result from the Gloucester supporters perspective at four tries to three La Rochelle winning here but they never gave up Gloucester. It was a changed performance in the abject display at Newcastle eight days ago, wasn't it? They were in their faces. They almost repeated their brilliance at Bordeaux here this evening and got so very close. And they really challenged their hosts by giving them no space and, and trying to play some rugby at times when it mattered. There's a very relieved <laughs> French gentleman in front of us shaking his head, breathing a sigh of relief. He knows they've been in the contest here. And the Gloucester players just leaving the pitch, 
shaking hands, looking a bit disconsolate, but it had everything. It had yellow cards, it had tries, it had adventure. It was physical and combative. Lost the points in the first half coming from Chris Harris with his try, a brilliant uh, training grand move, converted by 12 to set out of the penalty. Freddie Clark's try just for half time, loving it up because Lavachelle has scored a penalty through Hastoy. His conversion of Bougerie's try, he couldn't have the extra to Thomas's try, and it was 15 apiece at half time. Might have been more for Gloucester because Carreras we thought was over, but that touchdown disallowed because we some was judged to some illegality in the build up to the try. So 15 apiece at half time, and then a yellow card for Lewis Ludlow at the start of the second half didn't really help Gloucester's cause. They conceded the try, predictably, from Kerr Barlow, who's an absolute menace. Scrum half for La Rochelle throughout the game after some relentless pressure converted by Hastoy. But what a response from Gloucester Reeves Summit's touchdown. A sweet cross field kick off the boot of Billy Twelve Trees. Intelligent kick brought the flying Welsh winger into play. He touched the ball down. Gloucester had the lead by two points. Ten minutes played in that half. Twelve Trees extended the lead as well. So 20 to 23 it was. But then a yellow card for Rizal. Gloucester thought they might have just snuck home with 12 trees penalty giving Gloucester a 22 26 lead but it wasn't to be and despite quite remarkable defence in the last five minutes of the game ultimately the pressure told and with a man in the bin Teddy Thomas snuck in the corner for a try converted by Hastoy great effort from Gloucester they won't be playing the winners of the Saracens Ospreys game tomorrow but they've shown their real colours here in front of their travelling faithful they've gone down here in the west of France Fighting hard magnificently by 29 points to 26.